bless every race team and their families. Bless everyone here today, and may we truly be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. The National Anthem, founded in 1943, will be performed today by the 313th United States Army Band, comprised of 31 citizen soldiers who train and perform as Army musicians. Signing today's anthem is Marche Brownlee, a student from Alabama Institute of Deaf and Blind. drivers are going to get today. Final thoughts. I'm watching that 2 and that 48 and that 88. I, I just find it so hard to believe that these three super drivers mm -hmm. might not make it at all. They might be going home and won't be in this chase. Yeah, today is a microcosm of what this sport is all about. Who is willing to lay it on the line to advance? Lap 1 to lap 188. You don't want to miss a single one. And Alan, DJ, and Andy, you're going to take us for the rest of the way. It's going to be a thrilling afternoon, Nicole. Thanks. Built to be the biggest, baddest, and fastest super speedway in the world, combined with today's stock cars means thrill a minute racing that you, you truly, you can't miss a lap of. No, you can't miss any of it. It's 188 laps of the most intense racing these drivers do. They're going to be in packs of 35 to 40 cars all day long, two, three, four wide at times. They're going to be touching. As drivers, you just know that, the, that danger is there at any time and lurking. The, we're going to show you a lot of pictures of all of this happening. The one thing that we can't show you is the white knuckle <laughs> underneath those driving gloves that these drivers have for a little over three hours here this afternoon. Yeah, what's great about it is you're going to see dozens of leaders. Your guy might be up front for some of this race. He might be in the back. But you want him to be coming to the front at the end. But you, to do that, you've got to avoid one of these. You've got to stay out of trouble. You've got to keep your car in one piece until you get to the end. That's hard to do here. And it, every lap, every second, at any place on this track, this can happen. And you navigate through all of that, all the lead changes, all the white knuckle racing to get down to the last lap where they lay it all out there in what's always a thrilling finish. Yeah, thrilling finishes is what this place is known for, and we will see that today. And it could be a thrilling finish for one driver to punch his ticket into the next round for the chase. They'll come to this finish line three, four wide. Who will it be that gets there first? We'll find out as the drivers buckle in and get ready to go racing at the world's fastest speedway. The command to start engines for the Geico 500 at Talladega is next. Geico 500 at Talladega is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance and Toyota. Let's go places.
a spectacular 67 degree afternoon in Talladega, Alabama, as ESPN brings you the Geico 500 for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, the third and final race in the contender round of the chase. 12 drivers eligible for the championship starting the day. Only eight will be championship eligible at the finish of this one. The 43 drivers lined up along the pit road, climbing into their cars, finishing up the last of the safety equipment checking. And the strategy conversations, and in moments, the engines will be fired and they'll head out onto this giant two and two thirds mile speedway for a full afternoon of stress and competition. Should be an interesting one. Jeff Gordon starting all the way at the back of the field along with Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin. Some of those who need to find a way to race their way into the next round of the chase. Let's go trackside now for the command to get the race started. Ladies and gentlemen, here to deliver the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome Regional Vice President of Geico Macon Southeast, Red Raper. All right, help me Talladega. Drivers, start. Out and clear. These Alabama fans know, know those words by heart, know to jump right in. So, ready to go. The field will be rolling out onto the Talladega Super Speedway in just moments for the beginning of the Geico 500. When this championship format was first announced back in January, and Talladega was an elimination race in the championship, everybody looked around and said, oh boy, that's going to be a big stressful one. Oh uh, Yeah, these drivers all know that this has always been the most intense 500 miles that you have. But for 10 of these drivers here today, it's the most pressure they've ever faced. Yeah, they've raced for championships, but there's nothing like the pressure they're feeling here today because 10 of them are racing for the opportunity to be a part of this championship. They're going to feel emotions and pressures that they haven't felt before. What happens when you have that extra pressure? The pushing gets a little more intense, the side drafting does, that creates accidents, and we could see that here today. So yeah. the two groups of drivers, those that are barely in but not safely in, and those that are out and need to find a way to get in, how do they play the day? Well, these guys that are in the top half of that, they need a solid day. They need to finish in the top half of the field. To do that, they've got to have a car at the end of the race. That's not easy here. I mean, it, it's really tough to get to the finish, but they have to protect their car. The guys at the back that have to win, they have to have a car too. So I think you're gonna see these guys kind of protect themselves. They're not gonna run up there and do anything crazy until the end. But I think when it gets to the last few laps, you'll see the guys that have to win pull some really crazy moves. The other guys are gonna just try to get a solid finish. Now the big wreck can come at any moment. We'll see when it does. And if any of the championship drivers are caught up in it, of course the start's always dramatic too. And that green flag comes up next. Denny Hamlin's our in-race reporter. Talk to him next.
May 4th this year was the first of this year's two NASCAR Sprint Cup Series races at Talladega Super Speedway. Denny Hamlin got out in front of the field when Justin Allgaier got turned around, coming to the white flag. Debris on the racetrack forced the race to end under yellow, and Hamlin scored a huge win, his only win of the season so far, and the win that got him into the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Denny's results in the three restrictor plate races so far this year, the two at Daytona and the one here at Talladega, phenomenal. Plus, of course, the two non-points races at Daytona that he won. He's got some work to do today, though, starting in 38th position, our ESPN in-race reporter. Hey, Danny, Dale Jarrett, ESPN. Good for a couple of questions? You got it. All right, Danny. Hey, we just showed the outstanding performance that you've had so far this year on these restrictor plate tracks, the jobs that you've done. And we're going to go to a couple of our mailbag questions uh, kind of along those lines. Samuel from New York says, most chase drivers have been dreading Talladega, but with your recent success on plate tracks this season, have you been looking forward to this race? Uh, not really. <laughs> a lot of it is because uh, the circumstances are different. Uh, during the regular season, you're pretty much looking at a win to get yourself in the chase, and here you know, our circumstances are we need to get us a solid finish to move on. So at the end of the day, whether it's a win or it's a 15th place finish that gets us to move on, we're going to have the same amount of points. So obviously we'd like to get a win, but we got to play it smart today. And Danny, I know uh, from my days that you have to have a lot of good fortune to happen through that, but you also have to show a lot of patience. And that kind of goes to our next mailbag question from Dominic, also from New York. Which strategy do you believe keeps you out of the big one? Racing up front all day or riding around at the back and going for it with 20 to go? I've seen them both work and I've seen you make both of them work. Uh, you know, it used to be a thing called the Dale Jarrett strategy of kind of laying in the back and then showing your face here at the end of these races and winning them. You know, I've had a lot of success this year kind of staying up front. Uh, but being that we've qualified so far back, I think the smart move is for the first 40 laps, just kind of see how this race plays out. All right, Danny. Hey, good luck out there today. Thanks for talking with us. I know it's a big day for you and your race team. We'll look forward to talking with you later on. Denny Hamlin, our ESPN in-race reporter at Talladega today. Denny is carrying our Toyota onboard camera. Inside his number 11 machine, we'll ride with Denny today, as we will Tony Stewart. He's got our Mobile One on board. Clint Boyer has the five-hour energy camera, and Kyle Busch has the Sprint on board. The Energizer on board rides with Kyle Larson, and Eric Almarola has the Smithfield Farms on board. And Jimmy Johnson from the front row, carrying our Sunoco on board. All right, fellas. Get ready to rock and roll here, 500 miles. Let's go out there and get this thing done. Do it the way we're supposed to do, 48 style. Jimmy starting on the outside of the front row and the Diet Dew on board today rides with Dale Earnhardt Jr. who's back in 28th on the grid. Still a couple of more long pace laps at Talladega before the green flag. We'll be back in plenty of time for the start. Don't forget you can check out NASCAR.com slash race buddy for enhanced coverage today from Talladega with all those high definition onboard views, live chat and leaderboard.
back live at Talladega Super Speedway as the Geico 500 is one pace lap away from getting started. This the elimination race in the contender round of the chase. So you got to be in the top eight in the championship at the end of the day. Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick already through. Even Kyle Busch is only a half a race ahead of being eliminated. If he gets caught up in a wreck and finishes way back, he could be out. Kozlowski, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jr., they need a big day in order to get in. And updates on the four that are presently out, beginning with Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Alan. You know, folks, in the history of NASCAR, no name has been more synonymous with success at these kind of super speedways than that of Earnhardt. Dale Sr.'s finest performance may have come right here in his final win when he charged from 18th to win it in the final three laps. Today, Dale Jr. needs to lean on the legend and legacy of the Earnhardt name and couple that with a little bit of luck and a whole lot of talent to put on a performance that we will remember for decades to come. Folks, these final 50 laps should be wild. Here's Vince Welch. Yes, six-time champion Jimmy Johnson is a long shot. 26 points behind the cutoff to move him on to the next round. But Johnson sees the glass as half full, telling me that under the previous chase formats, with an average finish of 15th, he'd have no chance at all. But under this current format, he does have a chance. All he has to do today is win, and he'll be back on equal footing in the next round. Jimmy Johnson has won here twice before. Don't count him out today. Dave Burns? Remember how Brad Keselowski's chase started. He was the first winner and reaped the benefits of automatic advancement. But the second round hasn't gone as well, and today he's on the brink of elimination, unless he does something very champion-like. Now, Brad doesn't have to win the race today, but the math would be a whole lot cleaner if the Tuesday would end in a one. Jamie Little? Well, one week ago, the pressure and frustration boiled over for Matt Kenseth going after Brad Keselowski after the race. Now, he's one point away from advancing to the next round of the chase. And to add insult to injury, they had to change an engine. They will start last. Don't expect Matt Kenseth to stay there long. They've got to go for it, Alan. So Matt Kenseth for the engine change, Brad Keselowski's team for an alternator problem, and Terry Labonte making his final NASCAR Sprint Cup Series start. Has to go to the back also. His team had to make some unapproved adjustments after the post-qualifying impound. So two and two-thirds miles around. 500 miles is 188 laps. The uh, number of lead changes in this race will probably be 30 or better almost non-stop and remember the unique location of the start and finish line at Talladega not in the tri-oval but past that halfway between that tri-oval and turn one massive crowd here on a beautiful day for a race that's fun for us if frightening for the drivers it's the Geico 500 at Talladega the final race in the contender round of the chase four drivers championship hopes end today strategy and that's really the smartest thing for those five drivers from third back through seventh that can point their way into this by finishing in a certain spot the one thing they have to do on that last lap be moving forward not getting past Ryan Blaney driving a third Penske entry here this week in the 12. Yeah, he could be a factor at the end of this race in some different ways. Certainly he would like to win that first Sprint Cup race of his career, but he could be a big factor in helping Brad Keselowski maybe get the victory lane and moving on into the next round of the chase. Junior, you were 
they're on board with up to eighth position after starting in 28th. It's going to be that kind of day. Guys from the back coming to the front. Guys from the front going to the back. Up and down and up and down. And there's a number of these drivers, like Jimmy Johnson, like Dale Jr., Brad Kasachi. They need to get that point for leading a lap. Yep. One of those really needs to lead the most laps to try to get that bonus point. That, that could be beneficial to them at the end of the day. If in the shakeup of things in the late laps, it does come down to the one point per position. Remember that now Jimmy Johnson has led a lap today. He gets a championship point for that. Trevor Bain sticks around the outside of Casey Kane. Watching these lines, looks like the outside lane is kind of taking the advantage here early. See him running right up next to the wall. Left Jimmy Johnson back about five or six car, or car lengths on the bottom. And it seemed that that formed up and everybody decided to stay in line there more. And so that just, you could see everybody kind of left Jimmy and Brian Vickers down there to the inside. And when you don't have any help, it's going to be hard to move forward. See Jimmy now going to that outside. It's almost like these drafts take on this personality of, them, of their own. It'll, it'll run around the top for a while, but as cars start running the bottom, you see it kind of shift down there. I really did think it would take a while longer before we were going to see them get single file and up around the top of the racetrack. That just goes to show the importance of being around at the end and give yourself that opportunity. But that just goes to show the narrow margin for error when Michael and Ed in the seven got forced wider. Casey Mears in the 13 right behind him had to give way or they were going to wreck. drivers that are going to the back and we can see a group that's lost touch with that first big pack just a little bit as these cars lined up along the outside and started going they can make faster time like that so you have to be careful not to lose that draft completely even if you get lined up you may have a harder time running them down and becoming a big part of that draft that front pack again you know it's funny as you watch this scoring ticker come across the top of your screen and you see the yellow as the drivers that are currently in the chase, those points positions. Normally in most races, those top 10 running spots are all lit up in yellow. And here in this one, it's like most of the bottom 10 running spots are all lit up in yellow for the moment. You drop into the back hoping to have a little extra reaction time to miss a wreck if it happens in front of you. But at 200 miles an hour, that's not guaranteed for sure.
The Geico 500 for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series just underway. Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. Ryan Blaney leads in the Penske 12 after just nine of the 188 laps. It's no better place for the aerial views than this one. And our aerial coverage today provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Jimmy Johnson trying to lead an inside lane to form up and roll toward the front. Fourth car back in that line is Dale Earnhardt Jr. who went to the middle to try and find a lane to run, then went to the bottom, tried to go to the middle again. He's picked up a few spots on the bottom, and Jr. really, like he told us during countdown, working hard to try and make it happen. Yeah, he's got no choice but to be aggressive here pretty much all afternoon. Uh, he needs to lead. Apologize for those mics cutting out. You were saying? I say he needs to lead a lap and then the, the most laps that, that he possibly can to get as many points as he can here this afternoon. He's not getting a lot of help at this point in time, though. Well, he looked like he tried a move that was going to put him at the head of that inside lane if he could have just cleared Jimmy Johnson earlier, but there just wasn't enough momentum there. Which threw him from 7th back to 17th. Now you see he's moved back up to 10th. And uh, three of the first four cars in that inside lane are Hendrick cars. Trying to draft up toward the front. And yeah, making all of this happen, you can, you've got to really stay tucked up as that. And, and you see Jimmy, he's kind of moving around a lot on this, on the, the track. If he's going to go up there, he needs to side draft. That's the best way to pull those cars apart up there at the top. I know he doesn't want to take a big chance of that, but that's the only way to slow their momentum. And the other thing that's happening, you see right there, the inside lane is not nearly as organized and staying as, as single file and tight as they can. And so they keep losing a little bit of ground to the outside lane. So that's how you have to disrupt that top is to be able to saw Paul Menard right there get a little bit squirrely. Now these cars look very similar to what we see race every week, but they're a lot different, especially aerodynamically. They've got a lot smaller spoilers. They don't have near the stability. They have a lot less drag. See it, Jamie McMurray lead a draft up through the middle with Kevin Harvick and Trevor Bain behind him. McMurray's car, NASCAR had been having its spotters look at earlier because of reports of a possible oil leak, but uh, there apparently is nothing to that. And Jamie continues to chug forward in the number one. See another group that's come up there is Brad Keselowski in the two. Pretty much most of the day you can expect to see at 22 on his bumper. Junior trying to jump to the inside. Casey Kane jumping down there to block. Somebody's leaking pretty hard in front of me here. Could be a tear off on the stop. Heard that the one car is leaking. He is in the middle lane ahead of the four car. Keep digging the bottom here. Now, if they can ever identify which car they think is leaking oil, they'll try to figure out a way to shuffle him out of the draft. Now, speaking of shoveled out of the draft, the 2 and 22 lost some of the people that were in front of them who moved up into that middle lane. Now, Eric Almarola trying to go up through the middle with Jamie McMurray and Kevin Harvick behind him. Jimmy Johnson up front, pushing through Ryan Blaney to take the race lead here. Casey Kane behind him in the draft. The problem that Casey Kane's having a problem staying right there with Jimmy. I, I don't know if it's a, a heating issue that he needs to keep the car cool. Doesn't want to get it to, to that point of overheating at this point in time. But Jimmy's doing a great job of keeping this car out front or anywhere near the front. the lead somewhere during a lap, but he can't seem to hold it at the start finish line. Yeah. He still only led the one lap there, that, that first lap, and Ryan Blaney's led all the other ones. Really seeing Dale Jr. make some big moves, aggressive moves here early on. This is not some of the moves that we've seen him make here in the past. It shows the importance of trying to get to the front. He wants to be in charge of this race today. You heard his, count, his comments when he was in the pit studio during NASCAR countdown. What were your uh, reactions to them? I think he's right. He's spot on with what he's got to do. You know, unless there's an early wreck that he's not a part of that takes all of these others and puts relegates them to a finish around 40th or something, he's only got one strategy to move on, and that's to win this race today. Jimmy Johnson finally leads that lap. It's Johnson, Kane, and Earnhardt Jr. now. One, two, and three, Dave. 
Alan, talked to the engineers on the 88 this morning about what they worked on in practice, and it was drivability. What he's doing, DJ, is partially because he has a lot more confidence in it than he did when the weekend started. He felt very uncomfortable around other cars. A car, the squirrely word has been used already. That's how he felt about it, but they added some stability, and Junior can be aggressive. That's important, knowing that that's what you're going to have to be at the end of this race, making those moves. You've got to have the car under you. So Jimmy Johnson with the lead, Casey Kane to second, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. to third. Can he find a way to race through and into the next round of the chase with a win at Talladega today? Jimmy Johnson leading the Geico 500 at Talladega Super Speedway as we've completed the first 50 miles of today's race. And all of the drivers who need to race their way in are running up front while well, a lot of the ones trying to protect their place running out back. Visit Chevy.com to learn more about the all-new Chevy Silverado, the 2014 North American Truck of the Year. Chevy's running 1-2-3 right now in Hendrick Motorsports Chevys, but here comes Brad Keselowski in the outside line in the two. So the three drivers who started way outside of a transfer spot on the chase at the beginning of the day, Keselowski, Johnson, and Earnhardt Jr. running in three of the top four spots. And we're riding with Denny Hamlin, who's come from all the way in the back of the pack, to be running fifth. Yeah, what happened to his strategy of riding in the back? <laughs> he said he was going to stay back there for a while. You know, and sometimes things just open up and you see that. And he talked about to see 
you know, the, the kind of the calmness or on the other side of that, the craziness of this, the start of this race as to what he may do. He saw that things were, were rather calm for Talladega here at the beginning of this race. Not a lot of bump drafting and, and side drafting going on at this point. Getting a little uncalm here up front. start either the side drafting, which is what you do, especially if you're going to be in that outside lane and you're going to try to, to move your way forward. You're going to have to get on the, the right rear side door and quarter panel of those cars that are in that inside line to, to slow them down and break that line up. Yeah, well, it has kind of a double effect. It actually helps reduce the drag of the outside car, but it also adds to the drag of the inside car. So it almost pulls them back and gives the outside car a little bit more boost. And Dale Jr. continuing to be very aggressive at the front of the line, changing lanes, trying to get whatever like push is he needs to stay up front. Look at that. Yeah, that might have been blocked right there that gets him to the front if the two car could get to his bumper. Logano in that middle lane. He's doing his very best right now to try to get pulled up back up to the bumper of the two car. They're side drafting him from both sides, so that does make it difficult. thing is when drivers talk about seeing the air and understanding the air and this maneuvering around to figure out which lane's going to move forward and trying to avoid the lane that's going to get shuffled back. Yeah, there's air all around you, obviously, and what you're trying to do is maximize all of that air to your advantage. You, you're wanting to get the push from behind. You need that, that pull from the front just a little bit and trying to keep everybody off of the, the sides of your race car. Kevin Harvick losing some spots and bailing out, and he might have some visibility problems on that four car. I'm going to have to do something here because whatever's coming out of the back of the one is covering my window. It can be the 43. Clear low if you want. Clear low. Might be the 43. I think I would have to go to the back, guys. This, uh, I can't see. You can see the windshield. I mean, it's covered in oil. Yeah. terrible feeling as a driver in this situation not being able to see you can see right there he cannot see out of the front of this car I mean even the car behind him landing castle you can't see through his car either even the two in front of him so they've all encountered this coming yeah. up through so it's a car that's been up there that they've all had to deal with yeah but Harvick spent a lot of time right behind Jamie McMurray in that one car and that's who everybody says it's coming from so Kevin dropping all the way to the back, waiting for the first pit stop for a chance to get a windshield tear off removed from that car. For the lead, Logano has finally gotten to Keselowski's back bumper, two and 22, trying to draft by 48 and 88. And just to ensure that he's able to lead down here at the start finish line, he pulled down in front of the 48 there to make sure he's gonna get this bonus point. He'll probably get back up and let be with Joey then once he got that lap led. Car just ahead of him is Mike Wallace, who was on and off pit road for an unscheduled stop. Back at lap number two, and is about to be swallowed up and put a ninth lap down by the race leaders. Extended visit to pit road for the 49. If you see that last shot, you can see the car moving around a lot. It's not as stable as you would think they would be here. And this gets very tricky as they're two and three wide here and trying to go around a, a slower car as they approach that. Not everybody can see that and understand that if these guys make evasive moves, then it could leave somebody exposed there and something happened. So Jimmy Johnson and Brad Kozlowski, who started the day 11th and 10th in points, have both led. Kozlowski out in front now. Can he win and get in?
Jimmy Johnson has reclaimed the lead in the Geico 500 after Brad Kozlowski led three laps. Johnson pushed around the outside by Denny Hamlin, reclaimed the number one spot. 42 cars in the lead pack and on the lead lap, caution free to this point at Talladega. Check out the biggest mover in the race, brought to you by Sprint. Brad Kozlowski and that two had to drop to the back of the field for some repairs made on his car after the impound. Gained 37 spots in this one so far. Stay connected to the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup with the Sprint Family Share Pack. 20 gigabytes of high-speed data to share, plus unlimited talk and text for $100 a month. Learn more at Sprint.com slash data share. Now comes the part where we start to mention a lot of people you don't normally get to mention in, say, a race on a mile and a half track. Travis Quapple, the blue 83 with a big white decal on the hood, running up toward the top 10. The seven of Michael Annette for Tom Baldwin racing, running up into the lead group. 33 driven today. I mentioned Quapple just a minute ago. Uh, 83, J.J. Yaley was the other one. I knew there were some threes involved there somewhere. Uh, beginning to move up. It's Yaley who is in that uh, the car with the big white decal in the outside lane. And Quapple in the 33. And all of those cars now running in the top 10 at the moment. Three wide. Junior in the middle. Junior's been making all of these moves to try to get himself to the front and get a lap led, but has yet to be able to make it all the way to that top spot. Now NASCAR has just told Jamie McMurray's team to uh, have a plan together to fix if something is wrong on that one car on this first upcoming round of pit stops, Doc. Yeah, Crew Chief Keith Rodden has confirmed they do have an oil leak on the back of the one. They are watching closely our cameras, their spotters, trying to see if they can figure out where the fluid is coming from. Their scheduled stop is five laps away, actually four laps away on lap 38. They will come in and take a look at the back of the one, but they have confirmed they know they're leaking oil out the back. All right, Doc, thanks. Kyle Larson there in that 42. We thought we might have seen on the back bumper camera of that car earlier. We have a lens that continues to clean that camera off, but uh, earlier we saw on our private feed here that uh, there was some oil on the back of that one before the lens cleaned it off. You can still see some of the drippings there. So apparently it's a team thing. Yeah, apparently it is something that they were doing. That's I, creating I that situation you. with the one and the 42. Yeah, I've, I've had oil formulations that we found to make power at these racetracks that sometimes hard to keep in the tank. It makes a little more power, but it's so thin and that oil gets kind of misty and it starts, starts blowing out the breathers. I'm not saying this what's happening here, but I've had that issue before. They you heard Doc say the first window for green flag pit stops is just a few moments away. We'll take a break and come back for them. They're always exciting here at Talladega.
at the 100 mile mark of the Geico 500. About half the field is ducked in for its first set of green flag pit stops. Brad Kozlowski, Joey Logano, and others. Close call there with Marcos Ambrose sliding out of his box. Now another wave heading on to the pit road as the first wave leads. Leaves, excuse me, Johnson Kane and Earnhardt Jr. heading this second group. Dave? Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on pit road. He'd been running in about the sixth position. He'll receive a wedge adjustment for the race car. He said it was pretty good. And the 88 will get four tires. As for the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, he reported in that the car was good as well. They'll probably make a track bar adjustment on that anyway on the 48, Vince. The five of Casey Kane, a four tire change for Kane. Down and away, Sunoco Fuel filling him up. Troubles for Ryan Newman. As long as he gets going without losing the draft, he'll be okay. Third wave breaking off of turn four. Denny Hamlin took the lead for a lap, collected a bonus point. And now he's in. Jamie? And Matt Kenseth has been riding around the back. They wanted to get closer to the front. Right now, the call was for four tires. You see the tear off there. Fill him up with Sunoco fuel. Meanwhile, Carl Edwards in the 99. He's been running around in the backpack as well. A four tire stop here. They just want to maintain and play defense here in the 20s. In, and let's go to Vince. The 11 of Denny Hamlin a little loose, so they made a chassis adjustment for Hamlin and a four-tire change down and away. Dave. At the beginning of the run, Kyle Busch said the car is not loose, but the front end is not loaded. A very positive feel for the race car. He got four tires in Sunoco fuel. Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, Danica Patrick. Still to cycle through the pit lane. Here comes Gordon for his stop all by himself, Jamie. And the 24 is what I was trying to say was making his way onto pit road. The call was for right sides only. We'll see if they stick to that strategy to try to get a little track position, but you never know. They want to wait on him. Alan Gustafson with the call, get as much fuel as they can, and they stuck with their game plan. So Gordon needing to get off the pit lane without getting a speeding penalty, and they get up to speed and blend in to this draft of cars. Yeah, probably a great idea just getting two tires there to make sure that he could blend in with those. So the leader of the race is Tony Stewart, who's about two-thirds of the way back in this line of cars. But all those cars ahead of Tony have just pitted under the green flag, so they're all on the tail end of the lead lap. Everybody that's behind Stewart is a lap down. And Danica Patrick there, neon green and pink, the only other car yet to make a pit stop under the green flag in this cycle. Well, Stewart's kind of positioned himself to make a pit stop. I'm not going to do it this lap, though, doesn't look like. The last thing you want to do is get caught up in the outside lane when you need to make that stop and have to run an extra lap, maybe just run, run out of fuel. And run out of fuel. I was going to say, they're staying out there a long time here. And so the nervous pack forms again. Maybe staying out a long time on this cycle, but think about those extra four or five laps they just ran on fuel for later in the race. Mm -hmm. Might be a big deal. So Casey Kane will be the leader after Stewart and Patrick pit. Kane the third place car, but not by much. Tony and Danica headed in. Doc. 4,600 RPM, 55 miles an hour for Tony Stewart. Most of the guys complaining the car's a little bit too free in traffic. They'll put tires on, adjustment, right rear chassis, left side tires going on. Got to get it full of Sunoco fuel. Fence. The 10 of Danica Patrick led some laps here in May before being involved in an incident. Going to make a slight chassis adjustment, freer up a little bit. It's a four tire change for the 10 of Danica Patrick. Sunoco fuel to go with it. 
So the cycle of stops complete, and that big, snarling pack is racing for the lead. Jamie McMurray in the one on the outside, Casey Kane in the five on the inside. McMurray that lap. Good practice for the finish. <laughs> and that's probably what the finish is going to look like, something similar to that. Some of us have to think about those things, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Green racing so far in the Geico 500. The Geico 500 at Talladega is brought to you by Diet Mountain Dew. Drink Diet Dew. It's the only diet with dew in it and the only diet for Dale Jr. Settling out the contender round in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Today at Talladega, next week we begin the eliminator round. Martinsville, Texas and Phoenix to go from eight drivers to four to set up who will compete for the championship. Next Sunday, our telecast for Martinsville presented by AutoZone ESPN, 1 Eastern time. How about a little short track beating and banging and a lot of folks thinking they absolutely must take advantage of a chance to win. We'll make it exciting on that little half mile racetrack. We'll, we'll see a lot of sheet metal been up there. Already I made a note to myself to look up the record for most cautions in a race at Martinsville <laughs> before we get there next Sunday. Jamie McMurray, the new leader. Brad Keselowski popping out a line to challenge him. You see Casey Kane, who was the leader before, shuffled back now. Kurt Busch in that 41, took a run at the top spot, never got there. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been cycled back into the field after his attempt to pass Kane was blocked a minute ago. Jr. now back in 15. as I've seen Casey Kane be at one of these plate tracks. So Casey Kane to the lead after the round of pit stops. A follow up from Vince on Kevin Harvick. We heard that radio with Kevin. 
Kevin Harvick talking about the oil that was coming out of one of the cars onto his windshield and how he was going to need a tear off. And they did uh, certainly give him a new tear off. And look at the difference it makes for Kevin Harvick as we look through that windshield. And I can tell you that with that oil on the front of it at 200 miles per hour, what a challenge that must have been in the traffic here at Talladega. It, you can't even imagine the challenge that that is. Uh, I've had that happen before, and it's just you know, it's frightening as this is to race, and you see everything that's happening there, not being able to see up there exactly what's going on it makes it even more of a challenge and nerve-wracking. Starting to see the lead changes add up here. After Ryan Blaney and Jimmy Johnson led a lot of that first run of the race up to the green flag pit stops. Now Casey Kane takes command. We're having multiple lead changes that aren't recorded, but yeah. that's only officially recorded there at that start finish line. Just joining us, drivers that need to find a way to possibly win to get in, like Kozlowski, Earnhardt Jr., uh, Jimmy Johnson. They've been very aggressive, working their way to the front of the pack for this one, while others trying to protect a point spot to transfer into the next round of the chase, like Jeff Gordon, Carl Edwards, uh, Denny Hamlin, and Kyle Busch have been riding around at the back. Hamlin just dropped back to the tail of the field after making a run up through, and there you see Kyle running in 35th. We're going to call that a 7. That's a 7 right there. A 10 is back savings. This is 7. Keep us posted the rest of the day when it counts. Yeah, they're gauging how much he's able to save fuel by running in the spot that he is in the draft and giving that feedback back to the team. Ryan Newman has lost the draft. Started the day fourth in points, 21 points ahead of the cut line, but Newman now has fallen 12 seconds off the lead, 39th place, and he's lost this lead pack. Yeah, we saw him have an issue leaving pit road where he, he choked the car down and they had to push him on, and then, so that's exactly, all it takes is that split second not to be a part of that. Right here, we'll see. See, as he goes, just didn't give it enough throttle as he released the clutch there. Just that little bit of time kept him from being a part as they freight train by him. Yeah, there's, a lot, out of the pits. there's a lot of racing left, but you can just see what can happen with one small mistake. He's just now a couple of points above the cut line as they run. Well, David Reagan sure is impressive on these plate tracks. Knows how to get it done, doesn't he? And of course, the equalizing that the draft does gives everybody a chance. The small teams know they come to Talladega. It's a chance for them to win. Yeah, that, for a lot of drivers here, we keep talking about the chase drivers, and obviously that's the important thing, who's going to race for the championship. But so many others realize coming here, this is their last opportunity probably for the year to go to victory lane. They understand that. That gets the driver a little more excited, the team a little more excited about what they do, knowing that opportunity is here facing them today. And even more so, I mean, just able to run at the front of the pack all day gets this team a lot of exposure. We're talking about them right now. Uh, even if they don't win, they... they Go out here and, and perform like this and get a lot of attention. And that attention brings possible sponsorships, which then allows them to do a lot more things, be competitive here once again, and maybe at other places even more competitive. David Reagan running in fourth position for Front Row Motorsports. Casey Kane leading. Jimmy Johnson has fought his way back up to second. Just about 150 miles into the Geico 500.
We're just past 150 miles of the Geico 500, the final race of the contender round of the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup here at the world's fastest speedway. Casey Kane is out in front. There are still 41 of the 43 starters on the lead lap, and all 43 running caution-free so far. Stay tuned for our NASCAR nonstop coverage in the second half of today's race, presented here at Talladega by Goodyear. And a quick reminder that NASCAR.com slash RaceBuddy has enhanced race actions from uh, today here at Talladega, including all the onboard views. So that car down on the inside being overtaken by the pack is Texas Terry Labonte, the two-time NASCAR Sprint Cup champ, saying this would be his final start. They had some uh, troubles that lost the pack on pit road on their stop. And uh, Terry, as I mentioned, a two-time champ. Trouble coming off turn four. Joey Logano's around. And Jamie McMurray. First caution of the race. Yeah, about half the field had to come down pit road to avoid that. Which is perfectly legal. Zip down there. What happened off turn four? Jamie Murray gets just wiggle there, get loose. It's like he had a flat a tire go down or something like that. Yeah, right in front of Dale around. Jr. Mm. That's a great job by a lot of drivers there to avoid that. You can't see as Andy pointed out going down pit road. Let's see right here. See that car wiggle a couple of times. That just makes me think that there was a tire or something broke. He's been leaking oil the whole race. I mean, it makes you almost wonder if he maybe got some oil on the tires. That car did jump around it. quick. Keep coming high, keep coming high, keep coming high, keep coming high. Wow. <laughs> they just plowing up the end. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm sure they have a quite adequate fleet of lawnmowers here at Talladega to take care of that. <laughs> it's certainly not what uh, Logano intended. He drove backwards up the pit lane to get back to his stall. And there you see the Penske team working on it there. Of course, Joey already threw the next round of the chase with uh, his win a couple of weeks ago. He'll have a teammate in Brad Keselowski that really hates to see that car sitting on pit road getting repaired because that was he was hoping of having yep. a pusher towards the end of this race to help well, him still, win. He still might. You know, that car's not hurt too bad. And even though he's a lap down, he might be able to find his way in position to help Brad. So first caution of the race. Pit road's going to be open here. All the leaders were in under green between laps 38 and 44. We're here at lap 60, what will be 62 now. And probably see everybody in for uh, fuel. Yeah, probably right sides of fuel. Maybe some right side kind of, tires. Kind of reset the shot clock. And the pit road is open here. Dave? Dale Earnhardt Jr. said his car was light in the back, positive in the front. They talked about just a two-tire change. Jimmy Johnson, no comments about his race car, although he's been staying at the front. He's going to get a wedge adjustment in that race car and just two tires. As for the two of Brad Keselowski, can you get back to the front? Yes, I can. Okay, we're going to stay and work on a little damage on the right side. Vince? The five of Casey Kane says the car feels great, handling great. Four tires, no changes for the five of Casey Kane. Jimmy Johnson was the first one off pit road. So first caution out when Jamie McMurray running right at the front of the pack had trouble off turn four. 
collecting Joey Logano, and in some of the sliding around, David Reagan and maybe Brad Kozlowski got a piece of the stack up. Michael McDowell also with some possible damage on his car. Back live at Talladega, first caution out of the Geico 500. Brad Kozlowski's team doing work on the two car. Brad having started in the back and raced his way up to contend for the lead, now damaged in this accident, along with Kevin Harvick, Michael McDowell, Kyle Busch, and the Joey Logano, and the one that triggered it all, Jamie McMurray, who spun off of turn number four with an apparent flat tire on the one car. Watch all the people that get some damage in this. You can see when this car starts spinning around, it looked like the 95 was the first one we got, but he's going to get into the side right there, the two car. Keselowski doing a great job of holding on, but he's got a lot of damage. Down to Dave. They spent a lot of time working in the aerodynamics of the right side of the race car, got pretty much center punched by the one car coming back across. One of the advents of uh, the new era, if you will, car chief Jerry Kelly over the wall taking photos with an iPhone of the damage so that they can study it more clearly when they come back to the pit box, see if they can help Brad in any other ways going forward. Little replay of that happening a minute ago. Now Jamie McMurray's car, it's the one that spun to start the whole thing, Doc. Yeah, he complained he felt something start to vibrate suddenly. He thought he had a left rear or right rear tire. Now they told him he cut a left rear tire down and they damaged the left side of the car. They replaced that rear fascia. You see the red part on the back of the car? That's the rear fascia, the rear bumper uh, fascia that NASCAR would not let them leave and go back on the racetrack without. So a cut left rear tire damage to the left side and rear of the car repaired and back on the racetrack. Kyle Busch back in after uh, an extended stop for repairs a lap ago. A lot of Band-Aids on the nose of that one, Dave. A little extra shelling on the uh, front of that M&M's car on the left front side. It's on the bumper. It's not down on the splitter, but it's on the higher bumper side. So again, aerodynamics trying to get that right. Kyle contacted something in that skirmish. 
Now we've seen a lot of beaten up cars still be able to run in the draft and perform well. Oh yeah, you can get, yeah, utilize the draft. May not be as good out front as you would like it to be, but certainly in the draft you're okay. I was listening to ESPN Radio the other morning, and on Mike and Mike, they had the producer of this week's ESPN Films 30 for 30 talking about the film, and it sounds like a good one that you'll want to see. It's When the Garden Was Eden, talking about those great Knicks teams in New York that really kind of propelled the NBA into what it's become today. See it Tuesday at 9 Eastern time on ESPN and watch ESPN, brought to you by Infinity. Clyde the Glide and... Uh, love those, back in my day. Walt Frazier and... Red Holtzman and all the rest, and uh, what they did for the city and the sport as well. And uh, it should be, a, should be a great film to see on Tuesday night. Ryan Newman, remember we talked about, lost the draft earlier. Yeah, huge break for them. Uh, he had gotten fallen back uh, almost 30 seconds behind, but now able to catch up, still on the lead lap. got the free pass at the caution. All of the cars involved in the accident, except Joey Logano, managed to stay on the lead lap through their repairs. Logano's one lap down in 40th. And NASCAR spotters checking Jamie McMurray's car for a right front tire rub, where we'd seen them do all that Band-Aid work on the one car. I see Dale Jr. up here. For somebody who's worked as hard as him and not been able to get all the way to the front lead a lap yet, he's been in every spot possible trying to make that happen. Seeing back in second once again. Jamie McMurray back to pit road in the one car to get further attention on it while Jimmy Johnson leads to the trioval. He was there more than twice the amount of laps of anybody else so far today. I'm sure that he'd like to have that extra point. Yeah, he obviously would love to make sure that he's in this same spot whenever the checker flag falls. But if not, he's doing everything that he can to accumulate as many points as possible just in case someone up there in that top eight should have some issues. Today. Yeah, you never know. And the thing is, you can never feel good about where you stand, right? As you look at those points as they run, yeah, Jimmy's leading and now is only two points behind Denny Hamlin at the cut line. But with those guys just riding around and back, you know aren't going to be there all day long. And knowing you've also got to miss the wreck and get to the finish, the only thing these guys can count on for sure, and I mean Johnson, uh, Dale Jr., and Brad Kozlowski, is winning. That's the only thing they can count on for sure to get through and continue on in the championship. Speaking of Kozlowski, right side of the screen, two car trying to make his way back through. We heard uh, the report from Pitt Road. Can you make it back? Yes, they took the extra time to work on it, and he's halfway there, up to 14th. Yeah, as you said, with these, with the damage, when you're in this right pack and you're 42, working getting the a push and helping push, you can make all of that happen. 27, four in your mirror. It would be interesting. Cars in front of you, 13, 23, 83, and 78, pulling your lane clear low. If you need a bunch, Eric. Usually, with just side damage, it's not as bad once you get to the front. That shouldn't have an, have any issue if you can make your way back to the front. Danica Patrick has moved her way up to the fourth place now. We're in that top, yeah, the top fourth yep. place. Doing a great job. Marcos Ambrose with his final run here at uh, Talladega. I got a chuckle out of Marcos's comments the other day when asked about uh, 
this style of racing that he won't see anymore when he goes back to Australia and the primarily road course or all road course V8 Supercar Series set on the plate races and I quote I've enjoyed it as much as you can. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's kind of one of those things that you don't enjoy until you cross the start finish line at the end of the day if you're fortunate to do that. Then obviously the winner enjoys it the most but those others that are able to drive across there and haven't had a lot of issues throughout the day then you can look back and say wow that was a lot of fun. You were certainly going to miss Marcus Ambrose though. He been, added a lot of flavor to the series. He did. Great race car driver. Talked about the dry spell. Jimmy Johnson had been in career long in terms of not leading races. 29 laps led today. But a lot left to go before the checkered flag waves on this one. Most laps Jimmy's led in a race since his win at Michigan back in June. 71 laps of 188 down at Talladega. The six-time champ is in the lead. fans on the left because the car on the right has taken the lead for the first time all day at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Jr. with a push from his old friend Martin Truex Jr. out in front. Bonus point for lap led to the 88. Well, I have to say that he's earned that point right there. Hard as he's worked all day. Not that others haven't, but he has been up there a number of times, just hasn't ever gotten that right push. They've made a lot of aggressive moves trying to get in the right lane and the right position. He finally gets it. 76 laps in. He wanted to have control. We already talked about it at the end of this thing. He wanted to have control of the race and the restarts. And now he's figured out now how to get the lead. He'll spend these next few laps figuring out how to keep it. 
200 miles in in the Geico 500 at Talladega. 11 different drivers have led, 16 different lead changes. Now, when you have a lead like this, it, it, how hard is it to be able to manage that and to manage these lines when they get run? Oh, I mean, you're you're looking in your mirror the, the entire time. You barely look out front. I mean, it's just a glance to the front. You don't have to worry about hitting or missing the line as much here. You can make all of that happen. The car will drive around there. But you've got to anticipate what they're going to do and what they're trying to do, how quickly they're coming at your back bumper. Great look down on the world's fastest speedway from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn, making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR, inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. See Jimmy Johnson right there almost didn't give Martin Truex enough room there. He kept trying to inch his way down there thinking he was going to use that push. Truex had other ideas. A little game of chicken. Yeah. See if you can make him lift. Yeah, with Jimmy having the most to lose. That's the one thing about today is we haven't really talked about everybody else in the race here. We did talk about their opportunity to win. At other racetracks, they could give those chasers more room. Here, you can't afford to do that if you have intentions and ideas of getting yourself in a position to try to win this. You have to take that spot. You have to, to side draft there as close as you possibly can to make all of that happen, and that's what creates accidents. That looked a little dicey in one and two that time. Casey Mears, 13. Another solid run here at Talladega. Again, another opportunity for one of the smaller teams to shine. So Junior, Truex, Danica, then side by side, Mears and Jimmy Johnson with Kurt Busch and Paul Menard double wide behind them. And you mentioned earlier, JJ Yelly up there in that 83 car, still doing up in the top 10, doing a great job. The BK Racing Team. Chance to show off. Paul Menard trying to mount a charge on the outside. And the second yellow car in that line there behind him, now three wide on the outside, is Landon Castle, whose name, it seems like, always comes up in these Daytona Talladega races. Yeah, you, know, you have these drivers, and, and their cars are very capable here, and they're very capable. You know, they're not waiting till the end of this race. They know that they can make noise right now, and that's what they're up here trying to do, get themselves situated to the front, get those sponsors on TV, doing a great job of it. Front eight, now single file. Last one in that line is Kevin Harvick who's made his way back up after extended time on pit road after the only caution we've had so far. There you see the run on Harvick since the restart. You see Keselowski making his way back there. He's got a teammate there. That 12 car, Ryan Blaney this weekend. He's helped push Brad back up. Now he's on the bumper of, of Harvick getting a little toe. Three deep here, Larson, Yaley, and Castle. And we've got a very interesting scenario here. And the we, Michael Lynette, sorry, DJ. I'm sorry. But we, we, we're looking at the front part where drivers that need to win this race to move forward in the chase. Then we've got this middle group here who are all trying to win a race here, make a name for themselves, get their sponsors on TV, doing all that. And then we've got those guys that can point their way in, another group that's back behind there. So kind of three different agendas happening all at once. Yeah, we talked about strategies and what strategies people needed to use today. And it, it is a mixed bag because you've got guys that they basically don't have anything to lose and trying to win the race. They're trying to get their way up to the front. But the guys that have something to lose are protecting their position, are protecting their car, so they'll have something to race at the end. Casey Kane running 28th, Jeff Gordon 31st, Ryan Newman 35th, Carl Edwards 36th, Kyle Busch 37th, Denny Hamlin 38th. All well out behind this knot of three wide drivers. Not yet to halfway at Talladega in the Geico 500.
The pressure of an elimination race in the contender round and the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup coming here at Talladega where so much is out of a driver's control. A look at the positions the drivers in the bubble spots race in right now, shy of halfway still. And what it means to the championship picture. Again, a lot of those drivers above the yellow line intentionally choosing to ride around at the back of the field for the moment while others like Junior, Kozlowski, and Jimmy Johnson charging to the front knowing their best chance of advancing is to win. There's the 10-car breakaway group at the head of the pack. 88, Dale Jr. leading, 12, Ryan Blaney at the back end of it. You kind of like this to settle down at the front just so you can breathe and relax just for a little bit because you know as this race winds down, it's going to be more intense than ever. Really? You can breathe and relax bumper to bumper like yeah, that? Right there, you're okay. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> compared to how bad it is. Yes. We got a group now racing. We're going to get drug off the front group. Simple. Yeah, let's try to get everybody lined back up here again. Kyle Busch always thinking, always looking out the windshield of that car. Yeah, and he's talking about what we were talking about before we went to commercial there about how that group in front of, the, of them at the back were race, racing three wide and they had lost touch with that front group. Kyle's concern was that we're going to be up here. We've got to go get in part of that so that we don't totally lose touch with this race. It's all coming back together now, though. It seems like the whole field is. Jeff Gordon running back in 33rd position. Also riding around out in the back most of the day in the 24 car. Yeah, right now it's not about the leaders. It's about this group ahead of us. Yeah, I just don't want them breaking. Eddie DeHaan, Jeff Spotter. On the radio with Jeff there also at the tail end. It's really what it's all about. You're back there to be able to miss the mayhem, but the closer the mayhem is to you, the less your chance is to miss it. Yeah, they didn't mind that happen up at the very front of the pack. Matter of fact, they would much preferred that. They just didn't want, they couldn't lose touch with that group that was racing two, three, and four wide in front of them. But finally, those guys had held their breath as long as they could. They had to relax for a little bit. And... Second line has now run up and caught the tail end of the top 10. Kyle Larson with a move to the outside has passed Ryan Blaney. Now he's working on Brad Keselowski for what is the ninth position. And in that whole big group there that you see approaching that. There's a race within a race there too. The 22 of Joey Logano, first car lap down right now, racing Terry Labonte back there, who obviously in his last start would like to get himself back on the lead lap. Terry and uh, Joey, the only two a lap down. Joey's got about one, two, three, three cars between himself and Labonte. They're both riding in that outside line. There's Terry in that yellow and red 32, painted up to look like his uh, championship car when he drove for Hendrick Motorsports. Martin Truex getting the shuffle. Paul Menard had Kevin Harvick pull out behind him in that outside lane, and they're going to make a run. So Casey Kane trying to go forward as he'd been up the front of the pack a lot of the day.
years I've been coming here, when you watch these drivers in this draft like this, each and every lap, you're kind of on edge, waiting for something to happen. They're so close together at such high speed. Yeah, when it gets doubled up like this and people start making moves, the drivers are the same way. You're on edge, too. You know that you're just a split second away from being involved in a huge accident. Casey Kane with a move, shuffling Trevor Bain to the middle lane. And they're three wide again in the middle of the field. Matt Kenseth finally making a move towards the front of the pack. I expect him to be there trying to win this race when all is said and done. One of the best restrictor plate drivers that, and racers that we have. And he's in that situation. Yeah, he could point his way in, but he knows the best way is to be up there battling for the win at the end. Matt started last in the field after an engine change on this 20 car, Jamie. And I talked to his crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, this morning, and he said, we really want to be toward the front all race long, so it took them longer than anticipated to move forward. But he said, we're a win car. We need to win today, and in order to do that, we need to be toward the front. So they are on the move, and that's where they want to stay, up front the rest of the race. Matt started the race ninth in the championship. Just one point or one position on the racetrack behind Casey Kane, but he's at Talladega. That one spot may be out of his control, so it's much better to win and get in if you can. Tomorrow on Monday Night Football, it's J.J. Watt and the Texans visiting Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Houston-Pittsburgh at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN from the Steel City. We have an enormous number of Steeler fans on our TV crew. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Every time I watch the Texans and J.J. Watt, I swear there's more than one number 99 out there. Yeah. Seems to be everywhere. Here at Talladega, Alabama, we've just crossed the midway point of the Geico 500. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the race leader. 
The elimination race from the contender round in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. 12 drivers started today championship eligible. Eight will be championship eligible after this one is over. Just one caution in the race so far. When Jamie McMurray cut down a tire and spun off turn four at lap 60, he collected Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, uh, Brad Keselowski, and Michael McDowell also caught a piece of it. Otherwise, we've been clean and green through these 250 miles. And 38 of the 43 starters are on the lead lap. All 43 are still on the racetrack and running in the race. As I watch this part of the race, it's just, just rather calm. A lot of great racing, obviously, but you just think ahead. You just can't help. When you get to lap 180, the intensity, the, the level of pushing and side drafting, how much that's going to get magnified as these drivers try to be the first one across the finish line. We were with us earlier on NASCAR Countdown. Dale Jr. was in the pit studio talking about how he and Steve Letarte were going to be aggressive. They were going to gamble on strategy. They were going to do what they had to do to keep their track position. Jr. saying earlier this weekend here that he wanted to be the control car for the final two or three restarts in this one. That means being the leader and the guy able to dictate which lane goes first. He thought that would be his best chance to win here today. Yeah, that's the position you want to be in is the one that's out there that that blocks, that, that makes whichever line go the fastest to, to stay out front. Do the things that you know that you can do, have it in your control. You don't want to be at the mercy of someone else at the end of this. You know, he said he wanted to ask who would he like to see in his mirror on that last lap pushing him. It wasn't the guy that's pushing him right now. No, that's not the guy that he wants there for sure. Yeah. Long way till that point. But he, that's, he wanted somebody he, that was already secure, like a Logano or maybe even a Harvick and look up and say that maybe they'll push me to the win. I don't think that 48 is going to push him to the win. He didn't need someone that'd be as desperate for a win as he would be right. in that position behind him. <laughs> Casey Mears up there doing a great job. You point yeah. that out. He does a really, really good job of positioning himself. We talk about David Reagan, who has won on these type of tracks, uh, at both Daytona and here at Talladega. But Casey Mears does a fantastic job himself. Hasn't had a lot of luck in getting to the end in those good positions, but does a great job. There are the numbers on Casey. Having a fine day in a big, big race for his sponsor. Yep. Watching Casey Kane in that outside lane in the five try and mount a charge back toward the front. Got shuffled toward the back of the line earlier when they started racing three wide around him. Now he's trying to move back forward again. His team kind of teetering in position of deciding whether to hang at the back or move to the front at one point. And obviously the driver's made the decision and he feels good enough about it to go. Well, it looks like he's got the car to be able to do the things that he wants to do and he feels like that he can better control his destiny and this race today by moving forward and being up towards the uh, front of this. And, you know, Casey is one that, you know, right to the very end worked his way into the chase as we start the pit stops. Brad Kozlowski makes the first move from sixth place. Six cars in. Dave? Not a lot of complaining about that right side. Said the handling was a little free and a little tight in the exit at the end, but kind of concerned about the car being too hot. There's not a lot of debris on the front of the race car, but they're just watching the temperatures on that two car. Water pressure was okay. He'll get a wedge adjustment this time. Trouble on the track, Dave. Issues. Cars colliding on the back straightaway. Alex Bowman, 23, Tony Stewart, more piling in. Is that Kyle Busch in the inside wall? 18 car all right. torn up. We're done. JJ Yaley. Straight to the garage, straight to the garage. 83 involved, but the big story here, Kyle Busch riding around in the back in the safe strategy mode, caught up when trouble happened in front of him, and now Dave Rogers and the Gibbs team have to go into their disaster drill to see what they can salvage out of this day. Yeah, you'd have to think that the 18 got hit from behind, probably, in trying to avoid or slow down to miss everything happening in front. Yeah, it's, it's hurt. I mean, the rear clip's knocked off of it. Flat tire on Ryan Newman's car. Eric Almarola. There's Yaley. I think this happened right around the 43 and 83. And Alex Bowman. So 
Tony Stewart to get some damage to that from that inside wall. You hear the flat tires. Yeah, that car's used up pretty good. They're going to have to spend a lot of time fixing that one. All right, let's see if we can figure out what happened. Yeah, this probably comes from just a push that went wrong. Yeah, it looks like uh, Alan Roller got into the back of Gailey, just yeah. at the wrong little angle and just pushed him in the right side. And, and Kyle Busch there in the smoke gets run into from behind. Looks like by Austin Dillon, the three car. Look, Kyle Busch was going to be fine, but when all the smoke, Austin Dillon not able to slow down and runs into the back of the 18. Now, was the 43 being pushed by the car behind Kyle him? Kyle Busch the right question. there. Yep. He had slowed down and missed it and got run into by the three car. A.J. Allmendinger with a piece of that also, Doc. Kurt Busch on pit road saying the car very, very free. Going to be four tires, one round down on the track bar in Sunoco Fuel Day. Four tires only for Dale Jr. and a full load of Sunoco Fuel. The Jimmy Johnson car, it'll get four tires as well. He took two last time. The five of Casey Kane, they like the way the car has been handling throughout the course of the day. It's a four tire change. Crew Chief Kenny Francis reminded them, got to get it packed full of fuel. He's down and away. Harvick, the first one off pit road. Dave Rogers there walking around the far side of the car, surveying the damage. And the Joe Gibbs team will go to work. Kyle Busch started the race, the highest up in points above that cut line of everybody that didn't have a win. But he's the first one in trouble here at Talladega. You'll see it all with NASCAR nonstop presented today by Goodyear. Trouble on the back straightaway just past halfway. Back at Talladega, Kyle Busch 
the first of the chase drivers to have a major issue here this afternoon. In the garage, working on the car after a big wreck just a few laps ago, and we are under caution for the second time today. Inside the Quick and Loans ESPN Pit Studio with Rusty and Brad. We knew it was coming. We knew someone would have an issue today. It just took a little bit longer than maybe we thought. Yeah, it was just so calm out there right now. Everybody logging laps, trying to get to the halfway point at least, which they did, and now closing in towards the end of this race. And just a racing mistake happened out there. That was it. I mean, it looks like Austin Dillon. Yeah, he got so, in the back of the 18 car. Tough so team. our five-hour energy rapid recap. Let's take a look at what exactly happened and how it started going wrong for Kyle Busch. Lap 103. Yeah, we got Junior leading the race, and uh, all of a sudden it looks like the 83 gets into the wall. He gets turned. Kyle Busch looks like he's trying to get slowed down as we looked at it, and it looks like the three gets into the back of him, and he gets into the 47, the 18 does. They both slam into the inside wall. Kyle Busch has got a ton of damage. Yeah, I'm afraid he can't get that car fixed. I don't think so. It's really damaged real bad. Right now, he's at eighth in the points, Nicole, and I got a feeling he's going to fall out of this thing. He's got major damage. So much so, I don't think he can get the car back in the race. You look up at the top of the screen, guys, you can see him right there get the load up. Back in the garage. This is what teams prepare for. You bring a crash cart, you have to be prepared for the worst at Talladega. Yeah, as long as the, the frame didn't get twisted, it looks like the body on that race car, the chassis actually is actually twisted. And if that happens, that's a huge problem yeah, other than story. tie rod ends and ball joints. You can fix that. You can't retwist that frame. The problem they got, just what you said, Brad, the whole back of the car is knocked really bad out of shape. Yeah. The front of the car is tore up. I call that one of the worst wrecks I've seen in a long time to expect the car to get back into the race. It's really, really tough. Tony Stewart got a big portion of it. He got hurt. But this is a massive setback right now. Bad day so far for Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch in the garage, out of the race, out, off the track right now. More from Talladega, the final 82 when we come back. Doubled up for the restart of the Geico 500 after a chase changing moment for Kyle Busch. The nine car accident on the back straightaway and you saw the work going on on the 18 car back in the garage area. Ryan Blaney 12, Marcos Ambrose 9, 
Blaney the leader, choosing the outside lane for the restart. And we go back at it with 80 laps to go. Laney to the lead, Castle the second, Kevin Harvick pushing him. Here's Landon Castle for the lead at Talladega. And he's got it. Once again, just a great example that all of these teams that come here are part of this race, can get out front, can lead, and possibly win. Dale Jr. going to shoot the gap up the middle, three wide. Right there in your mirror. He would have won at lap 188, but we're not there yet. That was a heck of a move. Harvick through on the inside lane. Earnhardt Jr. on the outside lane. Keselowski right behind him. And Jimmy Johnson lurking right there in fifth. Here comes Matt Kenseth also in the 20. smidge on that one. Wow. <laughs> Call it 001. Yeah. By the score monitor. Having seen what happened to Kyle Busch, you got to think it's making a lot of these guys really nervous right now, especially with the sense of urgent racing here in the front. Yeah, they, they, they understand that that's where they need to be, but the chances they're having to take are putting themselves in some pretty difficult positions to stay up here, try to lead the laps. Yeah, with Kyle Busch, he was trying to stay in the right position to stay out of trouble. And it's, a, it's kind of a position that got him in trouble. Yeah, you know, all you can do is do your job. He had done his job. He had stayed out of the way. He had slowed down and was going to avoid the accident. But you can't drive the other people's cars, too. Now Kevin Harvick to the lead. Marcus Ambrose pushing him. Jimmy Johnson looking for a path through to get back to the front. And yeah, that nine car has found his way to the front a few times today. And still Newman, Gordon, Edwards, Hamlin hanging out at the back of the pack. Yeah, those drivers with Kyle Busch's problems, their job became a little bit easier here this afternoon with, with Gordon and uh, Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin. They, they are going to be able to approach this a little bit differently, even be more patient than what they had planned on being. Denny Hamlin, the only one of them that's made a run up to the front in the race at any point and ran all the way up to contend for the lead before dropping back again. And actually stayed out on one of the earlier cautions, led a lap, so he got that bonus point in his pocket. Now Jimmy Johnson outside of Kevin Harvick. Jimmy in the 48, Dale Jr. in the 88 just joining us have been extremely aggressive in pursuing laps led and the lead all throughout this race.
and Kozlowski behind him in the two got damage in the lap 60 caution flag took a shot on the right side door of the two went all the way to the back of the pack for repairs and there you see has come back up to contend for the lead got all three of the cars that have to win to get through the next round are right there up front Jimmy Johnson to the lead yeah one of those three could possibly point their way by leading the most laps finishing second and one of those drivers hanging out the back getting in the wrong lane or going backwards at the end of this race on the last lap. So you might have one of them, but it's going to be tough even with that if one of those other two happen to win this race. That's going to take one of those top eight spots away. So you better go win is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Yep. All three of them look like they have a car capable of doing that today. Kurt Busch breaking out low, 41 car. Putting Ambrose in the center lane. Yeah, that trioval area is the area that I'm next expecting something to, to break out. That's a difficult area. The cars get light there. These guys are making some very aggressive moves in that part. Casey Kane on the outside. Casey Mears on the inside. Ambrose in the middle. Seventy three laps to go. Just past 300 miles of the Geico 500 at Talladega NASCAR nonstop today presented by Goodyear. Inside the final 200 miles to so the Geico 500 Talladega Super Speedway, the elimination race in the contender round of the chase. Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Brad Keselowski, the three drivers who just about need to win to get in, running one, two, and three at this point. Check on the number of lead changes so far today, brought to you by Sprint. The tally about what we expected it would be. 
and it will only continue to grow as we run through these final 200 miles. Stay connected to the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup with the Sprint Family Share Pack, 20 gigabytes of high-speed data to share, plus unlimited talk and text for $100 a month. Learn more at Sprint.com slash data share. So three drivers who need to win to get in, running one, two, and three. A group of others trying to play it safe, running at the back. Jeff Gordon's 29th, Ryan Newman 30th, Carl Edwards 31st, Denny Hamlin 32nd, and the other major, major headline of the day so far. An accident just a little while ago at lap 103, where Kyle Busch, running in that, quote, safe position, got hit by another car and crashed. And the driver, the highest up in points, that didn't have a win in this round of the chase coming in, now finds himself back in the garage area with his car being worked on for the last 19 minutes. Change for second. Brad Keselowski moving forward. Yeah, it looked like Brad moved out, and Junior thought that he wanted to, to go and make a run. As Junior pulled out, then Brad went back to the inside. Yeah, he said, I'll just take that spot. That's the kind of people you're dealing with out there, and you have to know that. We heard Junior say that, that... They asked him about making deals when he was in the pit studio earlier today. He said, you know, basically, you could have that, but you can't believe anything they tell you. Circumstances will change that, and you just can't believe anything any of these guys tell you. Yeah, for Brad Keselowski, though, the further he can get that 88 back in this pack, the better off his chances are going to be. And the work continues on Kyle Busch's car. And really, Andy, the strategy for them is get this car out where it'll meet minimum speed, and then... They're expecting there's going to be another big wreck. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why they're working so hard on this thing. But they've got to get it where it will make basically lap uh, the minimum speed is 56.4 seconds. They've got to make that car run that speed uh, consistently to be able to stay on the track without getting black flagged. That's the mission right now: is as fast as you can get it done, but make sure that it makes minimum speed. And for them, and I say this respectfully, not wishing any other driver bad luck, but for them, the sooner the big wreck happens the better it is for them. Took the words right out of my mouth, and certainly we're not advocating or looking for an accident. It's going to happen. It's a matter of when it does. Uh, you know, it's just the, the racing's going to get too intense as this winds down. But for them to take advantage of that hard work and effort that they're making, they need that to happen uh, very, very soon, probably, for it to do them any good. Brian Vickers here about to be overtaken by the race leaders, 55 car. He got some damage in that uh, crash that involved Kyle Busch and Eric Almarola and J.J. Yaley and others. And the pole sitter for today going a lap down here. So everybody in all of these bubble spots watching the points tally that they have on a computer screen in front of them and counting the laps. Right now, if one of those guys were to win, we would be out because we're sitting in a P8 right now. So we'd be in uh, the one position ahead of 24 is three points ahead, 99 is three points ahead, 5 is five points ahead. So what Darian Grubb is pointing out to Denny is that by being in the eighth position in points right now, if Junior or Jimmy Johnson or Brad Keselowski wins this race, then that's another spot out of the top eight that transfers through. Then there's only five point point uh, positions on points, and you're sitting sixth right now. Yeah, and you can see just how dynamic that was. That was just a few laps ago that we heard that radio. And then by this time, Gordon now is plus 11. So it's, it's moving every lap. It's just hard to track, really, to the end of the race. And it will move significantly at the end of this race when Denny Hamlin and the rest of these guys decide to start moving forward and making up spot and changing spots. And that all they have to do is be patient enough to wait long enough that they can make all of that happen and not put themselves in too much danger. So Dale Jr., 88, tried the high line, couldn't get anything going, couldn't get any one going, and now he's all the way back to 11th spot. Brad Kozlowski's strategy when he hung him out there. Got to get him as far back as they can. When he's up there in that top three or four, he's within striking distance to take that transfer spot from, away from them. Now what's going to be interesting as we get down to the end of this race are people like Harvick, who's already through. Uh, Marcus Ambrose wants to win a race, but who does he help? Who does he push? Who do these guys get that push from to allow them you know, who do they choose as, as that person they're going to maybe push into the next round? It's a lot of power. 
It is. <laughs> or who do they back off of that rear bumper so they yeah. don't move on? There you go. A little ways from finding out. 62 laps to go now at Talladega. Geico 500 at Talladega is brought to you by Sprint. Introducing the Sprint Family Share Pack. It's the best value in wireless. Talladega Super Speedway, about 40 miles to the east of Birmingham and 100 miles to the west of Atlanta along the interstate, I-20. And they're right next to the highway, they're running some high speed action for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series on the world's fastest speedway. Jimmy Johnson leads the pack at Talladega with 59 laps to go. About to hit the 350 mile arc. And so much yet to be decided today in this elimination race in the contender round of the chase. Okay, there's your lead lap. <laughs> 32 of them. All running within four seconds. time that this outside is going to be able to make a push at these guys. I don't know why it takes a little while for that to happen, but you get a fast car like Paul Menard and, and Junior get hooked up there together, and they can start making their way forward. Caution for debris on the racetrack. Someone has just scuffed off the wall. There it is. Michael McDowell, that's wow. Just scuffed it. That's a hard hit. Yeah. Like a right front went down. Yeah, he had had damage uh, earlier when he got hit by the one car when he spun off a of turn four. So probably had a way out there. So third yellow out, McDowell heads back to the garage, joining the cars of Eric Almarola, Alex Bowman, J.J. Yaley, and Kyle Busch. Let's check in with Doc. We're continuing on the front of the 18 car. We're with Joe Gibbs and Coach, uh, how badly was the car hurt and how close are you? Yeah, it was really hurt. Uh, we had rear end damage, we had hit from behind forces into somebody in the front, the whole front fascia, 
was going. Our guys have done a great job, but we had to replace a lot of the front end. And uh, I know there's a lot of m and people out there just stay pull for us and see if we get this thing back out there. Our guys are going after as hard as they can. They are climbing all over this car. And Joe said the front clip was okay, radiator and all the front suspension had to be replaced. And they are very, very close. Their spirits were lifted when this yellow came out a moment ago to be able to get this car back on the racetrack very quickly. Alan? 28 and a half minutes now of uh, work on this Kyle Busch car. And now we'll look at what happened to Michael McDowell. Let's put us under this caution. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Hard hit. Yeah, hit huh? Right front just let go. McDowell taking damage in the lap 60 caution back off of turn number four when Jamie McMurray cut down a tire and spun into the uh, pack. Stops here will be with about 55 laps to go. That's outside of uh, a fuel run. Yeah, that's well outside. That's probably 10 or 12 laps outside of a window. But they'll probably still pit just so they can all get back in sequence and maybe be able to make a short stop there at the end. Yeah, we were kind of lined up there that uh, to where it was going to take one more stop if they, this thing would have gone out to green, that they, everybody could have held that track position there and made that green flag stop and then made it to the end. But uh, it's going to bring up some interesting situations once again. The problem is if you stay out here, you have to take full a full tank of fuel to make it to the end and pit early. So I don't think they would do that. You're Denny Hamlin, you're Jeff Gordon, you're Ryan Newman. We heard Denny talk about when uh, he was thinking he needed to start making his run to the front. We're down to 56 laps to go here. When do you start your move? Not even close. Not even close to this. I'm telling you, if these guys would work together between the four of them, they could make their way with three laps left in this race. They could pass enough cars to ensure that they move on to the next round. I, I know that sounds crazy, but they, Denny Hamlin proved early on that he can make his way to the front. Those are four drivers that are very capable. If they stuck together, they could pass enough cars. So, I, But it's so tempting to want to go and get yourself positioned up there. Yeah, I can tell you that you're hearing that from somebody that knows how to do it better than anybody I've ever seen. Dale's done that, hung out the back, and timed it perfectly quite a few times. That's why they call it the Dale Jarrett strategy. <laughs> I don't know if that's flattering or not, but it, <laughs> it worked a few times. You took home the trophy. <laughs> Pit stops here, 55 to go. Doc? Kurt Busch will be 10 laps short on fuel. They're going to put four tires on it, one round wedge out of the left rear. The car's a little bit too tight, and top it off, get it full of fuel. Dave? The race leader, Jimmy Johnson, says you need to tighten me up just a little bit more. They will do that with the chassis adjustment. And two right side tires, Brad Keselowski, two tires as well, Vince. And for Kevin Harvick, just left sides only in fuel. They're going to be about 10 laps short on fuel to the end as well. Jimmy Johnson off pit road first. There the strategy and the uh, scoring order off the pit lane. I think they set themselves up for if it's under green, just fuel probably. Yeah, that's what you can expect. A restart and some more frantic racing from the world's fastest speedway coming right up.
something bad's happened to a few different drivers today here at Talladega, and we've got a lot of racing yet to go. Kyle Busch, the one I speak of, involved in an accident that's had him back in the garage area for some time now as they repair heavy damage to the uh, 18 car. And Kyle, third in the championship, starting the race, is 43rd at the moment as we get ready to restart the Geico 500 at Talladega with a reminder to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. A wave of pit stops has left everybody about 10 laps shy of the finish on fuel. You saw during NASCAR nonstop, Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, uh, Matt Kenseth and more stay out and wait until the one to go signal to pit. They'll rejoin at the tail end of the field. So it's Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski side by side for the race lead as you look at how they're doubled up here. And we're going to have 53 laps left in this one. Yeah, and this is the time that things uh, start getting a little more intense as the cars are bunched up. Drivers try to make their way towards the front, so the pushing and the side drafting is going to become a little more intense here, which creates more bad situations. Joey Logano back on the lead lap after a wave around at the last caution. Didn't catch that for you. Brian Vickers got the uh, free pass at this caution. He's back on the lead lap, and here we go. Johnson outside of Brad Keselowski to try and stifle his run. Kevin Harvick took a peek. Johnson holds the lead. Look at Dale Earnhardt Jr. Three wide on the outside. Well, Junior's problem is he doesn't have a lot of help right at this moment to make that work. He's doing everything that he can to get this car to the front. Yeah, you can see that nervousness though in the draft. You see the 42 moving around. That's as high as he's been all day up there third. Fourth now on that inside lane. Kyle Busch suited up, headed to his car. Yeah, earlier in the race, it was Truex in the 78 that pushed Dale Jr. up to the front. Truex doesn't seem to have the same strength in his car that he had earlier. And now it's Joey Logano that's going to come up behind the 88. And they'll see if they can make another run. Here's Kozlowski looking to the outside of Jimmy Johnson for the race lead. I think that right now you're talking about Logano going out there with Junior. I think his motive in that is trying to get to the front to help his teammate, Brad Keselowski, who doesn't seem to need a whole lot of help. He got some nice push there from Paul Menard to get to the front. Now Danica Patrick slips up out of the pack in front of Dale Junior. Up front, Paul Menard trying to rally that outside line. Jimmy Johnson looking for whoever will take him back past that two for the race lead as Keselowski comes to the line. The new leader of the race. Brad had ideas of pulling up in front of the 48 there, but that was going to be tight. I don't think Jimmy was going to lift and let him have that for sure. He's all the way up against the wall. Car with option. So Michael and Ned and that seven doing a nice job. It got shuffled right there. 42 going to push the four. 48 has no help to your right. 42 four going to come to you. 48 kind of stuck on an island. Two back behind him is open. Right side hard, dragging right side. Four car jumped up in line behind the 48. That'll put the 42 in line behind you. 42, 9, 5 in line behind you. You guys are two wide, six rows deep. Joey Meyer, the spotter for Brad Keselowski. How about that? Yeah, that's a real good information he's given Brad in, in such a clear way. It's, it's really, I'm sure, helping him decide what to do. And you wonder why drivers might have a headache at the end of this day? <laughs> The spotters probably do too. Yeah, for sure. If you've ever listened to an air traffic controller like at O'Hare or something, cycling planes into the air or Atlanta, that's what it sounds like. 
Joey non -stop Meyer. cadence. Yeah, no, Joey Meyer is a pilot. He's a pilot for Brad Keselowski, so he has that same lingo, that same cadence uh, in, in the communications with ATC. Kind of what it takes here today to spot for these guys. So Kyle Larson not really able to stay there and push Keselowski. Kevin Harvin getting behind Jimmy Johnson has cleared the 48 into the lead and the four into second. Kurt Busch trying to rally some help on the outside line. Behind Paul Menard. Who's racing Keselowski for third. And Dale Jr. trapped behind Michael Annette. Sliding further back. Wow, he's getting a big run on the outside there. Yeah, but how far is he going to get up before he has to get, get back in line or before he can get back in line? Kind of stalls out right there. 33 car, Travis Quapple, the one behind him. Now Martin Truex pulls up in front of him. Eric Almarola's car is back on the track from that big accident before. He's 28 laps down in 40th place. This one's going to finish, but I could say pretty confidently it's going to be big. Jimmy Johnson leading. 46 laps to go at the world's fastest speedway in a crucial elimination race. What a sight. The race for the lead at Talladega. 33 deep from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. 
Jimmy Johnson 48 with Kevin Harvick four behind him. Kurt Busch 41 trying to pull up the middle lane and Paul Menard 27 trying to lead the outside line. Kozlowski in the middle now getting shuffled back off contending for the lead a little bit and the two he's behind Kurt Busch probably not in a very comfortable spot there's Casey Kane beginning to roll back to the front now in the five to the inside of Kozlowski Marcos Ambrose Truex with a run in the outside lane 78 Just inching closer and closer up to the lead. Really fast car that Paul Menard has. He could I uh, think, be a factor in who wins this, maybe himself. Yeah, I think uh, Jimmy Johnson noticed it too there. Had to pull up and block up momentum he had. But as he did that, he opened the inside. Kevin Harvick looking low. Johnson led that lap at the stripe. Harvick with Kyle Larson behind him in the draft in the 42. And sometimes there's just too much going on around you to keep up with all of it. And again, it's trying to anticipate that momentum that that car coming at you has. How much does that have? Are you going to be able to do that right? Sorry, DJ. When I see something happen from that overhead shot like I just saw with the pack tightening together all at once, that's when I hold my breath. That's what I wonder if the next word out of my mouth is going to be trouble. Yeah, and all it takes is that little bit of having to get out of the throttle or somebody not getting out of the throttle as they somebody slides up in front of them. And it's just that slight contact. That was impressive there by Jimmy Johnson to get him his car back in front. He used a little push from Paul Menard to get back in front of Kevin Hart. Yeah, Jimmy's doing an excellent job. He's got a really good car today. I think it's a little better than Junior's. He's had a whole lot of trouble trying to get back to the front. And he's not far from wrapping up. Most laps led in getting that bonus point. Don't know that that's going to benefit him today. Obviously, the win would benefit him much more. Looks like they've got that 18 car down on the ground, Jamie. Well, they did have it fired up at very focused Kyle Busch behind the wheel, and now they just shut it off. So I asked the team what's going on. They said they wanted to warm up the engine, make sure everything is fine there. They're also working on the toe. The toe is knocked out. So more changes, more fixes. Right now, though, everybody's looking at the board. He's four points to the good in eighth place, and they're keeping Kyle updated. Yeah, Jamie, that's provided. None of these other guys like Jimmy Johnson or Brad Kozlowski wins this race. If that's the case, then he's four points to the bad. We can see just how close that was there, yep. Jimmy Johnson pulling up in front of Paul Menard. Late in the race, he's not going to, might not get that spot. Going back to the 18, he can't, if something happens now in this group, he can't beat any of these cars that are on the lead lap, even if they crash out now, if he finishes all the rest of the laps from here. So all he can do is try to gain a couple of spots on the cars that have had trouble. And there are three others that are out of the race that Kyle Busch could pass by getting on the track and uh, finishing laps. Four others, actually. That was Jamie McMurray, the leader just overtook, who was slow on the apron of the track, who's had his problems ever since a lap 60 crash when he cut a, right, uh, a left side tire and spun off of turn number four. Tony Stewart just ahead of the leaders. Yeah, this type of situation that makes me nervous, too, as they come up on a slower car when they're three wide. Everybody back through there, even though they're getting some information, they can't see exactly where that car is. And there's obviously trying to get four wide makes it very difficult. Tony Stewart giving us a good look at the lead in his bumper cam. Coming on him pretty fast. Lifts and drops down onto the apron. Yeah, that's a good move by Smoke there. It gives everybody room. He's been in that situation before and understands just the difficulty of that. So Jimmy Johnson just clinched the bonus point for most laps led in this race. Could be crucial. 
Kyle Busch's car back out of the garage. There you see 48 minutes of repair time. Still looks like it's kind of crab walking a little bit. Well, believe it or not, it's in the right direction for lower drag, so it might help him actually. So now he's got to get out, meet the minimum speed, and just finish all the laps, pass the cars that are already out of the race, the ones involved in the accident with him, and then see if any more fall victim in the final 37 laps that he can overtake and salvage his uh, advancement in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. That's a lot to unfold in these last 36 laps. Look at that pack racing for the lead and the Geico 500 coming to 32 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson racing Martin Truex Jr. for the number one spot. And they're three deep behind them. About seven rows. How about four wide? Martin Truex in that 78 has not led a lap all Still season long. Line. He's going to try to get this right here. If he can get past Jimmy Johnson, he'll lead his first lap of the year. I saw his best opportunity there was to fall in behind the 48. It's a good spot to be in right now. And he did not lead that last lap, by the way. That was Jimmy. Greg Biffle, 16. One in the middle of the first three wide there, starting to roll toward the front. Biffle, one of the factors for the win here back in the May race. Back on May 4th. Been a place that he hasn't had a lot of luck at over the years, but certainly has been in the mix a lot. Keep seeing some give and take right now. Winding down to 30 to go. There's a lot of racing. Yeah, they're still, those holes are going to close up quicker, though. They're going to have to pit again for fuel, about 15, 10 to 15 laps to go. They all want to be as close to the front as they can. 
to make that stop to make sure if they have a little glitch they don't lose the draft and frankly just to try to stay up as far in this line as they can. Well, Junior had a little bit of a bobble there up off uh, turn four now has a little bit of a run. And all of this action at NASCAR's biggest and fastest track today. We go to the shortest track on the circuit, but it doesn't lack for action either. Martinsville and some bullring racing to open the eliminator round of the chase next Sunday, presented by AutoZone ESPN 1 Eastern Time. There'll be some fenders bent and some tempers boiling at the end of that one next Sunday in South Central Virginia. Brad Kozlowski, like Dale Jr., trying to find moves to make to get back to the front to have a shot to win this one. Hey, just trying to figure out where he can get that little bit of a pull that gets him going forward and get that push from behind where he can pick up these spots. He knows he needs to be up there in that top two or three to have any chance here. Of course, as you pointed out, Andy, they still have to make a pit stop, but you still want to position yourself there. And still... Gordon, Newman, Hamlin, Kenseth, Edwards all hanging out from 27th to 33rd spots. you know that hole is not 14 feet versus 17 feet when you're making that move like that on Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, part. you don't completely. That's <laughs> that's the chance and that's you know the expertise of these guys in knowing that and and that's what creates action is whenever people do have a misjudgment in that. Thirty three cars on the lead lap. All of them within four seconds of the race leader. 27 lead changes through the course of the race. 16 different drivers have led. Jimmy Johnson has led the most laps. Dale Jr. has led the second most. Joey Logano, we saw him plowing up the grass on the front straightaway earlier. He's up here in the mix, running 10th or 11th, just depending on when you decide to look. Yep. Lost a lap, got it back. Trying to find a way to get to the two and see if he can be the one to push Brad Keselowski to the win. He's not far from him right now. Look away, Jimmy Johnson fans. <laughs> Look away. You'll continue to see all the frantic action in NASCAR nonstop presented by Goodyear.
Geico 500 at Talladega is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And Chevrolet, find new roads. Jimmy Johnson finding ways to hold on to the lead here at Talladega Super Speedway in the final 23 laps of the Geico 500. Brad Keselowski trying to find a way around him for the top spot. And Danica Patrick leading a rally in the outside lane there four wide to turn three. was up there racing for the lead the way those fans just jumped to their feet that's certainly the second biggest roar that we've heard all day without question that side drafting thing talk to me about what you're trying to do there as a driver you're jimmy johnson and you're moving over yeah you're moving over to get against that car what it does is the air there will act put drag on that car and literally try to pull it back. You're hoping that, that what it does then, it su sucks somebody to your rear bumper and you can get a push. Danica played that perfectly though. Tried to get away from it just a little, didn't allow Jimmy to put that full, full force there. Yeah, but I think she used it to get to that position too. She yeah. used it pretty effectively to get to that right side door, even to the 48 to take the lead. I think she's doing a really good job. There. 21 laps to go, new leader, Danica Patrick. Jimmy Johnson looking for a way back around. What you have to do here as the leader is not give them too much uh, of either side of it. You know, you, if you give them too much on the bottom, then they'll make that run there. If you give them too much to the outside, wow, they're scattering right here. Travis Quapple in that black 33 with pink numbers leading that inside group. Looks like everybody had to check up in the middle there somewhere. But they all got away with it. Kevin Harvick, the big loser in that exchange. Austin Dillon now through to sixth place in the three car, bandaged up after he was involved in the contact with Kyle Busch that sent the 18 car to the inside wall. Back at lap number 103. You can see the left rear quarter panel of that car. It's got some damage. Looks like it's almost acting like a parachute that it might be hurting him. Not keeping him from going to the, towards the front. A lot of bandage on that car. A lot of tape. Joey Logano has gotten two Brad Keselowski. See if the Penske teammates can make something happen in the draft. Well, Keselowski was a big loser too when Danica took the lead. He had made a big move to try to get the lead from Jimmy, from Jimmy Johnson and that's uh, when they went three and four wide. He was the one that kind of had to jump out of the gas for a minute, but he's got his partner there with him now. That was Quapple you saw pull out a line off turn four and head to pit road for a green flag stop. We will see that for all of these drivers sometime in the next five to seven laps. That could get kind of dicey here too. We have seen in the past accidents happen as these drivers try to get the pit road. stop coming up too. They've got to get on pit road as quick as they can and get off and then they have to keep from sliding those tires because most of them I'm sure are only going to take a, about a half a can of fuel. Not going to be there very long. And don't speed. It's going to be very difficult. You want to get there and you want to get off but don't get caught speeding. six-time champion for the lead. Feeling good. <laughs> hey, she's doing a fantastic job. She's run, y'all you know, seen her run at the back, run in the middle, but uh, when it came time here to run, she made some good moves as I watched her work her way up there using the side draft and using the draft of other cars to get herself in that position. So yeah, she should feel good right now what she's doing. That's Clint Boyer trying to make some noise in the outside lane. Clint's been one of the crowd hanging around at the back. Yep, he knows how to win here.
Flint been sporting his Kansas City Royals cap all weekend long. Cheering the home state team on as they go to the World Series starting Tuesday night at the K. We're already seeing it now. These pushes are a little bit harder. These bumps are a little bit harder. You can see the side drafting starting to get a little bit closer. When will the moves to pit road be made? Hey, just if he locks up right front or left front or something like that, you're going to need to tell me because I'm not planning on taking tires. You got it. Chad Canals talking to Earl Barman, the spotter. Yeah, that, that's just what I was talking about. They, they're going to really be pushing this. They're going to try to do everything they can but they cannot slide for those front tires and usually it's the right front that gets the flat spot and he's Rely on that spotter to tell him, hey, we've got a flat spotted right front. We'll have to change two. It's like Ambrose is coming to pit road this time. You can see his hand out the window waving to let him know behind so he doesn't get hit as he tries to get down and slow down a little bit. This if anybody else coming with him. That's where it could get dicey here in the braking zone. It looks like all the Fords decided to come together. Ambrose, Kozlowski, Biffle, Logano, Blaney. Doc? It'll be two tires for Logano, two tires in three and a half seconds of fuel. They may put a little more fuel in it, trying to get the right side tires on, and he is away. So what looked like a well-orchestrated plan by some of the Ford teams to stop together, try and form a draft, and get back out. I think if they could do this early and get themselves, since they were all up towards the front of the pack, then they may be able to, to break away a little bit or at least be in front of this group after they pit. Next lap, here comes the leader. Oh, Kevin Harvick with some contact at the back of the pack, spun around. After this 43, you're clear. Just go ahead and donut it around. Dave? Talking fuel only for Jimmy Johnson, but he will get a chassis adjustment. The car was too loose. Me as well. A fuel only for Danica. So those cars come up to speed. The Fords charge at them to blend, and here come the other leaders. spinning on the apron of one and two coming off the pit lane trying to get up to speed caution is out caution is out kyle larson spun coming off the pit lane and the yellow flag is out before all the green flag pit stops have been finished So yellow with 13 laps to go. And watch Larson here as he's a one part red, of this two, group. One. Now, one red. Stand outside, you're all right, you're all right. Pull the door out, he just got hit right there above the, in front of the right rear. In front of the right rear. A lot going on during that cycle. Here you go, come around, five. It looked like the seven of Michael Annette got into the back of Kevin Harvick as they had to check up there. Yeah, one thing that happened right there is Danica slowed everybody down. She checked up just a little bit more than I think they were expecting as they hit pit road and it jammed everybody up. And now this is going back off the pit lane on the apron of the track. Well done. Yeah, he's down on the real flat of the, the track there. He had someone to his outside and, and couldn't get out there where there's a little bit of banking. Right, and that is rolling, the dirtiest part down Yellow's there. Out. Too. Yellow's out. So the only one of the lead lap cars that didn't pit is Jeff Gordon. In a normal oval track race, you'd say, boy, that's a disaster. But he's been running around at the back, and that's where he's going to end up for this restart anyway, though on the lead lap. Yeah, hey, not what we needed. I was afraid you are going to say that. 
think that was a big break for like Ryan Newman and a couple of cars that were on pit road when the caution came out. Field slowed down, so they were able to get positions on them. Yeah, got a lot of track positions. Yes, but they a got lot of yes. track positions. Jeff Gordon is going to pit here from the lead, and then he'll end up back somewhere around 30th place by rejoining at the end of the field. And again, I, that, that's where he's been running anyway. Still not a disaster. They weren't going to come till inside 10 laps to go to start making their way forward, so I don't see any problem with them. Here, by doing this, they'll be able to put tires on this, get plenty of fuel in case there's a green-white checker, which is a good chance of. So yellow out for the fourth time in the race here at Talladega. Yeah, the group of cars is Cole Witt, David Gillen, Ryan Newman, Trevor Bain, Landon Castle, and David Reagan that were on pit road when the caution came out. That was just a big break for them. It's going to put them right in front of Danica Patrick, who was the leader and the leader of that group coming off of pit road. So pit road open here. And uh, it will be a lonely sight. Austin Dillon's going to get a speeding penalty for his green flag pit stop. And uh, Jamie, here comes Jeff Gordon. And Alan Gustafson said we're going to take right sides only, but let's see how many cars come. We might have plenty of time, so listen and be heads up, guys. They decided it is going to be four fresh tires here. They'll fill them up with just enough fuel for as long as it takes to put tires on. And Jeff Gordon is down and away. When things cycle out here, Ryan Newman's going to be the leader of this race for this restart because of what you talked about a minute ago. And uh, it's going to be a really interesting nine or eight lap scramble to the finish. Vince? It's been an eventful day for Denny Hamlin. They had to fix a little right front damage on the previous pit stop coming in. Going to make a four tire change for Denny. Remember, he's one of those still trying to make his way into the next round of the chase. Four tires and Sunoco fuel for Denny. All right. How's it going to turn out? That's what we're all here to see, isn't it? That's right. That's it. Who transfers in, who's eliminated, and who wins at Talladega? As you see, doubled up for the restart in the Geico 500 with Ryan Newman, now the leader of this race, and we're going to go at it with nine laps left in the scheduled distance. How many of these positions in that right-hand column will change in these final nine or so laps? Positions it's going a great to change. Question. I don't know about all of that and what's going to transpire <laughs> with that, but there's a lot of positions getting ready to change on the track. Yeah. 
and of course the biggest one who wins and how does that change the number of those spots available in that bubble. Looking down on beautiful Talladega from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Joey said he's glued to you like a tattoo, but uh, I'll spot for him as well as you like we were doing earlier, just so you know. Just keep it posted on gaps in front of me, too, so I can push. So Brad Keselowski back 16th in line for the restart with Joey Logano 18th behind him. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is 13th. Jimmy Johnson is 6th. And Ryan Newman ended up with the race lead by where the caution fell as he was making his green flag pit stop. Yeah, he was on pit road with those other cars. And what happened was when the caution comes out, everybody slows down. And then he they don't have to really build their speed back up and blend back in. They freeze their position as they come off pit road. So it was a big break for them. So there you look at the restart order. There are 32 cars on the lead lap. Kevin Harvick got the free pass to get back on the lead lap after losing one in his pit road spin. And here we go. Remember, Ryan Newman lost the draft at one point in this race, now leading at the end. Jr. on the inside trying to make a big move. He's got to make something happen. Yeah, winning's the only thing right now that's going to matter to him, along with Jimmy Johnson. Ken's up there in the middle. He's one of the masters at this plate racing. You get hit that hard, yeah. it's out of your hands. Newman trying to figure out which lane to block. Jimmy Johnson with a run to the outside. Better block that 48. Brad Keselowski with him. Joey Logano tucked in the draft also. Reagan low, 34, Landon Castle, middle lane, 40. Jeff Gordon trying to make moves. He's up to 16th place. Carl Edwards still riding around in 30th. Denny Hamlin, 27th. Four wide. have to win this race to advance. He just needs to stay out of trouble here, but his best shot of doing that is up here towards the front. Yeah, but he wants to win. He really would like to get a win. It's been a great time to do it. And if he gets shuffled out, it might not just be one or two spots he loses. Jimmy Johnson leads that lap. Oh! Uh -oh. I think that was Clint Boyer forcing his way in there, wasn't it? Keselowski looks to shoot the middle. Remember Chicagoland. And making that move, he got away from the 22, but that's where he had to go to get to the front. Gets down on the inside line behind Newman. Hoping he can shuffle Jimmy Johnson back and have a shot at racing Newman for the win. Here comes Kozlowski looking low. Kozlowski knew he had to block Jimmy Johnson there. That's who he has to keep from winning this race. To have his shot at it. Five to go.
Boyer to the inside. Oh. Trevor Bain getting knocked around a little bit. Hangs on to it. A whole lot. Wow, Jimmy Johnson makes some aggressive moves in the crowd. There comes Logano to help the two car now. Caution flag out. Caution for debris. And we're not done yet. Wow. One of NASCAR's spotters in the corner has reported a piece of debris on that yellow line in one of the corners. I apologize for not being able to pick up all of the radio transmission. There's a little going on there. Wow. Awesome. So yellow flag number five. And I'd say everyone gets to catch their breath, but what they really get to do is regroup and try to figure out what went wrong and how to make it go right. Now NASCAR's going to have to sort out in what position everybody was when that caution was thrown. Because they were three and four wide there. And so remember that uh, and there's something on Joey Logano's car. That might be what they were looking for. That's a piece of metal. Yeah, that's not good for Logano. Hey, if you could uh, sock a little piece of debris off the grill there. See if he can run up on the back of his teammate and knock that off. So remember that the way that the uh, timing yep, and scoring system works, and now who picks it up? That thrown down to the apron. At the moment, the caution is called. David Hoots, the race director and the managing event director for NASCAR in the tower, presses that button that triggers the computer system. And under a yellow that's not after the white flag, the moment that each car crossed the last scoring loop on the racetrack is the one that determines their running position. That running position already being called out on the race control radio to the spotters so they know how to align their drivers. Of course, on the last lap after the white flag waves, they go back to video replays and so on to determine where everybody was at the instant the caution was called, which might just come into play yet. Desperate times for three drivers that just need to win this race to stay in the championship. Brad Keselowski, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and this one, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy, that 22 was set on the radio multiple times. He is not going to help you. We'll do what we can here on the next one. Not a lot of help up here for us, man. You're just going to have to do your best. You're doing an awesome job, man. I'm really proud of you. Check downstairs in the Quicken Loans CSPN pit studio, Nicole. I was just checking my heart rate Woo! a little bit down here. <laughs> wow. Uh, I have no idea what to expect in the end. I think it's really interesting the position that Jimmy Johnson is in right now, having absolutely no help. When he looks in his rear view mirror, absolute nightmare. Yeah, it really is. You see Jimmy Johnson taking it to, to a new level, and so is Brad Keselowski. They're driving harder than I've ever seen him uh, drive in my life, I, I got to tell you. The guy that was really making me a little nervous is Landon Castle up there to mix. He was yeah. running Great really, really story. good. Kind of got him all boxed up yeah. a little bit. Yeah, he and Trevor Bain as yeah. well, but Ryan Newman, he is not going to give up. He's scratching and clawing, trying to figure out which lane to take. I was really impressed at how he held those guys off by himself, so to speak. And how hard is he to pass? Harder to pass than a kidney stone. That's what I thought. Just, I, I, what do you do? What do you do on this last restart? You just got to block. You got to block, block, block. And a guy that's in the best condition right now really is Brad Keselowski because he's got his teammate Joey Logano behind him. Those are really fast forwards. And Logano, or Keselowski, has got to be loving the position he's in right now, looking at his rear view mirror, knowing his teammates right there with him, going to help him. We've heard before, Logano says, I'm not moving off your bumper. So, look, the restart coming to the start finish line and exit in turn two, to me, is so important to get in line. We'll see what happens. It's just an interesting mix because Martin Turex Jr. just led his first lap of the, the year. He's up there in fifth, obviously hasn't won a race. Clint Boyer has not won a race. Kurt Busch hasn't won a race since Martinsville earlier this year. And Trevor Bain, he's not won. Yeah. So they're fighting to get to victory lane while the others are fighting to advance in the chase. Yeah, all bets are off. Right now, you're trying to get to that, that checkered flag first. We saw Clint Boyer be very, very aggressive. 
Truex Jr. has had a tough year. This would be a great win for that team, that organization. And Ryan Newman, same thing, great win. Need one, haven't had one this year. My pulse has settled Woo! down. Let's Just get it time on. Time to go back up again, Alan. <laughs> yeah, uh, at the very least, Nicole, it's going to be a rather spellbinding couple of laps. We are set for a green-white checker finish. Uh, the one-to-go signal being given here, and uh, we will go a lap over the scheduled distance. So this is the first attempt at a green-white checker. Let's check down on pit road, Dave. Paul Wolf washing over Brad Keselowski's activities today. What's he got ahead of him here on these final laps, Paul? Well, he's done a great job all day, and, and the whole team has all weekend on this Reds Ford. And all we can do is ask for a shot coming out of the end, and uh, we're in position right now. So uh, it's just all about, uh, about who helps who and uh, what lines go. So uh, we know he's really good at this, and uh, we're happy to have him behind the wheel. Remember, he's got one teammate out there that can help him for sure. Ryan Newman made a good decision by taking the bottom on this restart as a leader because if he hadn't done that, he would have had the two teammates lined up on the inside. It's a good way to split them up. And there you see the last four times we've had a green-white checker finish here at Talladega. The leader at the scheduled distance was not the winner that took home the trophy. Vince? With Luke Lambert, he's the crew chief for Ryan Newman, and there was some discussion uh, as to which lane Ryan was going to take for this restart. How'd you decide on the bottom? Yeah, I think that it's just it's a little bit safer. You can control your destiny a little bit on the bottom. It's the short assist to get there, and it, and it puts you right on the line. I think it, it helps the best. How concerned are you about who you might or might not have to work with on this final restart? Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the 22 is, is behind us, so, uh, you know, he's not going to necessarily want to push us by the two, but we'll see how it plays out. Thanks, Luke. Alan? All right, Vince, thanks. So you've heard from Kozlowski's team. Dale Jr.'s all the way back in 16th for the restart, and there's Jimmy Johnson in fourth. That are probably solid and don't need to do anything stupid are going to be the 5, the 99, the 11, the 20. Those guys aren't going to do us any good, I would imagine. 78, 15, 41, 21. Those guys are going to be aggressive. 78, 15, 41, 21. DJ, Andy, you've been making all those racer hand signals to each other up here. What are you seeing? <laughs> I think it's just a matter. Do the two, it's the 22 and the two. Are they able to, to get together quickly? And does Jimmy Johnson get any help here? Ryan Newman, he really can't take too many chances. Bad as he wants to win this, he just needs to finish with no trouble. Green-white checker attempt number one. Could be up to three attempts at it. But if the leader gets back to the white flag, the next flag ends the race, be it caution or checkered. Here we go. the 21 of Trevor Bain pulled out of line too quickly there. We'll see. Jimmy Johnson being shuffled on the outside. Talk about no help. Yeah, he's going to need another green-white checker to have any chance of where he's at now. But Casey Kane gets to his back bumper there. Might be too far back, though. Oh, trouble. Junior's in that. David Gilliland, Michael Annette. Paul Menard and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Okay, bring it to a set. Get tires on it, guys, and fender's clear. So caution out. Half a lap into the green-white checker. You mentioned Dale Earnhardt Jr. restarting back in 16th place, and it went wrong for him before he got to turn three. Not bad, Stevie, not bad. can see what happened on the back stretch that led to all this. Yeah, this is Greg Biffle right here. You see just inside Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt Jr. looking to try to, I think he was going to try to make it four wide and clips the left rear. 
That's what set it off. Just looking to see Carl Edwards and Jeff Gordon there. And the mere fact that Junior's car turned back the other way and spun to the outside was what kept them from being collected in it. Yeah, and I'm just wondering if the 38 got into the back of the 16 there because you saw Biffle's car really veer to the right. Two inside, two inside. Your lane's rolling good. Your lane's rolling good. Coming there. Alright. Keep coming there. One more car coming, buddy. Hold it right there. Hope you don't get you here. You're good. And you can see from that angle that the 38 did get into the back of the 16, and as he was trying to change lanes a little bit, his car was already pointed that way and sent him over into the 88. Carl Edwards get through that. Look at that. Wow. Kyle Larson. My two, reckoning in front of you. Check out, check out, check out. Keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. You're still wrecking. Yellow's up, yellow's up. Next up. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. knew that he needed to uh, most likely win this race to have a shot to advance and continue on in his championship hopes. And now he's um, been put in an almost impossible situation because he's going to be at the end of the line with a damaged race car and just two laps left. Jimmy Johnson. It, you said... Well, we're going to run out if we go green in three laps at the, at the start finish line, so you make the call. Yeah, so. they, they, they'd kind of timed it out on that green flag stop uh, to get it on and off pit road as quick as they could. They only took a measured amount of fuel, weren't really counting on the extra distance. And Jimmy shuffled back to 15th uh, in all the knocking around on the restart there. And if he pits, and a lot of others don't, which they probably won't, That'll shuffle them all the way back to about 30th. Yeah, and that takes him out, you know, just completely out of it. You can see up on top of our screen there as, as things and drivers and others have positions have changed a lot. You know, Kyle Busch, even with his Rick race car, has the possibility of staying inside that top eight. Yeah, Casey Kane sitting in 16th. If he can pass one car and put him ahead of him. Not much Kyle Busch can do about that. He just no. watch, see how it plays out. Yeah. He'll have a good seat for it. That pretty well sealed the fate for Dale Earnhardt Jr. though. He won't he won't make it past this round. And when he visited with us before the start of the race today, he talked about how aggressive he needed to be and how at ease he was with what it had come down to because of the way things had gone wrong for him for the last couple of weeks. And boy, he sure was aggressive early in this race and driving the wheels off that thing to try and stay up front and contend for the win. It just looked like somewhere in the middle of the race, the, the performance of the car fell off a little bit where he couldn't stay up front. Yeah, what we heard through some radio transmission today was loose and loose in, and I think that's why we couldn't see him make the way up to the front like he did early in the race. Just car was just a little too free. Can't be aggressive, even though you don't have to get out of the throttle, you can't be aggressive with the car in these drafts and in, in all of these three and four wide situations to make that little extra little move you need to make. Yeah, sometimes you just have to take it and turn it straight left uh, to, to get to a point of where you're gonna get some help, and if that car's loose, you can't do that. There's just nothing you can do or you're gonna crash. So they clean up all the debris and then we'll line them up and go again for the second attempt at the uh, green white checker finish. Pushing 
Paul Menard's car to the garage, working on Dale Jr. still, and this sure can't make Rick Hendrick happy looking on, Vince. Rick, uh, certainly frustrating for Junior, but uh, others in the mix as well with Jimmy and, uh, and Casey still there, uh, Jeff as well, but uh, maybe initial thoughts on what happened with Junior there. Oh, it's, it's, you know, it's just Talladega. It's, uh, you know, we've been up front all day and I don't know where we're gonna end up. It's just, this is gonna be a crazy finish. Uh, just, uh, that's, you just can't avoid it down here when, when you're running that close together. It's, it's just, you know, what you have to get, get used to. You've been through it. Move on. It's not easy. You've been through a lot of Talladegas. How do you handle it when it's uh, down the stretch in the final laps and you've got multiple cars trying to make it to the next round? Well, it, it, you know, you just you just got to do the best you can. Uh, you know, the 48s led the most laps today. Uh, Junior's been good. Uh, you know, the five was up there in the top five, and I just I just hope Jeff can make it through. We'll we'll see. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a wild finish. Nerve wracking time for Rick Hendrick. All right, Vince, thanks. So I just want you to go and, and, and look again. Jimmy Johnson, uh, I'm sorry, Jeff Gordon, down on this inside line, all the cars with the yellow roof banners. And watch how close this came when Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car started to come into the pack. And when it got turned back around to the right, you've got Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin, Jeff Gordon, and how close it came to becoming a disaster for them. Yeah, if he doesn't hit that car, he's going to spin down in there. And then who knows what would have happened with the, the chase moving forward from today. And somehow, as Menard came back across the track, Edwards missed him too. Yeah, he did a great job wow. avoiding all that. You know, you've hung out back there all day and done everything you're supposed to do, and then it all happens right in front of you. Carl Edwards, great job. So they're doubled up for the restart. This time Brad Keselowski was the control car as being in front of Ryan Newman for the restart. So that changes a critical element here. Yeah, the teammates uh, get to be there right there together. So chooses the outside lane. There are still 32 cars on the lead lap. And again, we'll go with two laps to go. A second attempt at a green white checker finish. If they get back to the white flag, then the next flag ends it, be it caution or checker. And Logano's going to do everything that he can to push that two car on the start to get him out front and then let him handle wherever he wants to go from that point. Jimmy Johnson trying to save fuel down on the apron of the track. He needs to be clear on that car back and forth trying to get some fuel to the right rear corner. So Johnson needs to win. He's back in ninth place for the restart. Keselowski needs to win. Though might squeak in on points. Might. Not likely, though. He probably just needs to win the race to be sure. And Kyle Busch's fate hangs on how many positions change hands here in these last two laps. He might sneak in. He might be left out. We're about to find out. Mike Logano timed that pretty perfectly to be right on the bumper of the two. Oh, trouble, Trevor Bain. He's going to save it. Look like maybe off the nose of Jimmy Johnson. We stay under green. But for how long? Kozlowski's clear of Newman. Now Kevin Harvick makes a run to the outside lane. Matt Kenseth was pushing him. Logano to block. That's left his teammate out there all alone, though. To the white flag. Ryan Newman to the outside of Kozlowski. Newman leads at that line. Who leads at the next one? But you got to get back to the front because a caution can happen and you can be out of luck. Kozlowski really doesn't have the help that he's going to need to win this race. And he must win it. But he's in good shape now because Newman has no push. Here comes Landon Castle behind Matt Kenseth, behind Brad Kozlowski. But watch Kenseth. He can still make a move. 
Landon Castle to the outside. Trioval, sprint to the checkered flag. Who wins? Brad Keselowski wins it at Talladega. Absolutely, positively, have to win a race, and you get it done. That has to feel unbelievably good. I tell you, I've said it a number of times. You back these drivers into corners. It's amazing to see the extraordinary things that they can do. And Brad Keselowski was not going to be denied today. Yeah, this might be one of his biggest wins ever. Hey, I don't cry over a lot of things. This is the closest I'm ever going to get. <laughs> yep. Big. I mean, you saw Casey Kane do this in at Atlanta. Had to win to make to make the chase, the initial round of the chase, and he did it. And it was very emotional for him. This is big. That was quite a drive that Keselowski did. Having to. They were three wide behind him. How do you choose? Which one do you choose? Who's coming the fastest that you need to block? He blocked them all. Yes, he did. I really thought he was out of luck on the back straightaway because he didn't have the car there that he really needed to push him. Now, what NASCAR is doing is checking the photo finish camera, confirming finishing positions, and therefore the points to double check who's eliminated and who advances. It's very close at the bubble. Brad Kozlowski winning ensures he moves on. And we can pretty well confirm that both Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. will be eliminated by not winning in this one. The spoiler angle check down at the entrance to pit road where all the cars have to go. And you talk about some desperate racing for the lead. You see the damage on that right side where he was involved in that early race accident. Extremely lucky not to get any more. Yeah, almost taken out right at that point in time. A hard hit into his door. Our Goodyear superior performer. And why not? Absolutely. Yeah. Doesn't get any more superior than that, for sure. So I started to talk about uh, the desperate racing for the lead on that last green-white checker. Watch the moves that Kozlowski made to try and get around and keep Ryan Newman behind him. Yeah, Newman made a great run down the front straightaway through the trial to get the lead back there. Kozlowski was clear for just a minute, but Newman had a run. Whoa. Then that Kenseth got behind the two, but Kenseth got a little upset in the back end of his car when Landon Castle in that 40 pushed him a little hard coming through the trioval, and Matt couldn't make a break to try and steal the win away. And after last week, you know that Matt would have loved to have got to the bumper of that two car, but he just couldn't quite get there. Yeah. Watch the uh, back end of the 20 here, the white car. See, just a little upset. But isn't it ironic that Matt Kenseth pushes Brad Keselowski to the win? Landon Castle right in the mix. I mean, an opportunity for him to win this race. What a great job he did. Travis Waffle up in there. Well, disappointment for Dale Earnhardt Jr., Doc. He climbs out of the car, finishes 31st. He finishes 31st here today and uh, getting out talking to Stevie LaTarte and talking about what happened on the racetrack. Junior. Looked like you had a really good car, led some laps. What happened on the on that restart where you got turned? I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to see a replay of it. We was just running along there behind the five, and I don't think I changed lanes or anything. I was following him on the outside and just got hooked in the quarter panel 
Um, we got uh, we had a real good car race today. We got real loose on one run, kind of shuffled out. I'm going to show you what happened here on the restart. I guess I, the 16 moved up into us or something there. I thought I was sort of going straight. Uh, I don't know if we were four wide or whatever there, but hard for the spotter to help me back there if uh, there's anything else I could have done. But we were just sitting there running straight there. And it's just hard racing. That's the way it goes at the end of these races. We weren't in a good position there in the back. Yeah, looks like he guys kind of hooked me a little bit. Maybe I came down. I don't know. It looked like you had a good car. You were trying to draft up there with a 27, but the car didn't seem like it wanted to suck up. Was there an issue with the car? Uh, I ain't real sure, really. We had uh, some red gauges there. Uh, different, different things, uh, doing some different stuff at the last probably 60 laps of the race. Some some, uh, some gauges weren't really reading re re really good, but I don't know if that was uh, costing us any power. But we had a good car when we could lead when we get up front. It's just so hard to... Uh, once you get shuffled to the back, uh, you know, tried to make some moves, just couldn't really get anything put together to get back up there. You began the year with the Daytona 500 win, had a great year. You were talking about what a good year you guys were having, but you don't move on in the chase after today. Your thoughts? Uh, well, we'll just go try to win some more races for years out. That's all we got left. All right, Dale Earnhardt Jr., you can see that uh, the emotion, the disappointment, and obviously uh, a little bit confused as to what might have happened with the car. Vince. Disappointment down in his uh, teammates stall as well in the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. You led the most laps today. It looked as though you had a good car, but ultimately, what was the difference at the end? Yeah, at the end, I, um, well, I guess next to last restart, assuming it would be the last restart, I was lined up in fourth, and I, I really felt like I played things out in my mind, and if I pushed the two to the lead there, there wasn't enough time to get back by him, so I thought my best opportunity was to get to his outside and hope that a uh, fellow Hendrick car, the 41, would kind of fall in behind me and I could tow the lane and get around the two and have the outside lane and hopefully run, uh, run down the 31. I made my move, I got to his outside and I looked in the mirror and I had no friends. So it's, uh, it's how plate racing goes. Um, if I knew there was a second green-white checkered, uh, I probably would have stayed in line, but you just don't know how those things are going to develop. So, you know, today I really wanted to enter today's race feeling like I was playing with house money. I was given an opportunity today to get back in the, the championship battle after two bad races. Um, we, we tried our best. Um, they gave me a great low Chevrolet today, and unfortunately we just didn't get it done. So played with house money and lost. So much success over the years, six championships, but what's the disappointment of knowing that's the end of the run for you this year and you won't be able to attain a seventh? Yeah, this year for sure. I mean, there's disappointment, but to be honest with you, the disappointment's been, you know, the weeks leading up to right now. Uh, we just had a very competitive race and had a shot to win. So, um, you know, we, we've dealt with that, and you're not going to win every every championship battle you enter. Uh, we, we'd like to, uh, but I've raced for 30-something years, and I've really only won six big championships. So uh, the numbers show that you don't win a lot of championships. Uh, but we'll be back next year. Rules will change. Um, this you know, we'll, we'll start looking and thinking about 15 now moving forward and uh, hopefully have our, our low Chevy where we need to next year. Always acts like a champion, though. Jimmy Johnson. Alan? Vince, thanks. And Brad Kozlowski has driven into Victory Lane, presented by 5-Hour Energy. Well, there are a couple of different ways to move on, but that was the right way. How in the world did you hold him off at the end and do that, Brad? Well, I guess first off, Dave, uh, maybe right way. The right way wasn't probably last week, and went through a lot of adversity, and uh, you know that makes this week I think a little more special. Uh, been a long couple of weeks, and to win and make it to the next round. And I know there's probably some people out there that aren't really happy I won. I can I can understand that. Uh, but, you know, I'm a man like anyone else who uh, does things ain't always that proud of. And uh, I'm not real proud of last week, but I'm very proud of today. And everyone at Team Penske for the uh, Reds' uh, Wicked Ale car here. This Ford was fast. I knew it was fast the last time we were here, Dave. And uh, we got caught up in wrecks. And I thought, man, if we can just get through a speedway race this year without a wreck, I know we can win. And we're fortunate enough to do that today. And it's so special, man. I don't even know how to say it. You talked about the emotion on the cool down lap, Brad. What's going through your heart right now that you fought to this point? Well, these guys, this is what's going through my heart and my team. Uh, I think 
you know, it was very easy to, to write ourselves off after the last two weeks. And uh, we had one job to do, and it was come to Talladega and win, and, and we did it. And uh, treated this weekend like Homestead, and if these guys can keep it up at this level, uh, we got a shot at it, and I, I'm really, really thankful for that. Would you call it your biggest win of the career? I, I don't know how it. Uh, my first win of my career was here, Dave, and that was really big, and this is at least equal, and it's special. So I just want to say thank you, and uh, thanks to everyone that, that cares about this team, the two team, and uh, we're just very, very thankful, very blessed. Thank everybody at Sprint that uh, sponsored our series, and uh, we're going to the next round, Dave. Brad Keselowski, real, the winner, and moving on. Alan. And so NASCAR has finished its double check of the finishing order and the championship scoring. And here is how the points stand and who's going on to the eliminator round. Logano, Harvick, and Kozlowski with their wins. Then Newman, Hamlin, Kenseth, Edwards, and Gordon. And because Kozlowski won, that made one fewer spot available on points. So Kane is out along with Kyle Busch. And you already heard from Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. So there are the eight drivers that'll move on to the eliminator round in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup that starts next Sunday afternoon in Martinsville, Virginia. More coming up from Talladega. What a win at Talladega for Brad Keselowski. His third win here at Talladega in his 12th race here in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. And his sixth win of this season and none coming at a better time than this one that gets him through into the third round in the chase for his second championship. Roger Penske with his back to you there. Making his way down from where he watched the race from to greet his driver in victory lane. Both of his drivers moving on in this championship. So a look at how they ended up finishing today here at Talladega. Uh, what a great run for Kenseth uh, to get there, to even have a chance but move himself on without winning a race to this point. How about Landon Castle? Great top five finish for them. Travis Quapple at 33, finished six. A lot of great finishes for some teams that needed them. Yeah, Casey Mears there with a top ten. So there's Casey Kane in 12th. Denny Hamlin in 18th. Jimmy Johnson finished 24th, Jeff Gordon 26th, Earnhardt Jr. 31st, and Kyle Busch wound up finishing in 40th place. Doc? Well, Jeff Gordon will finish 26th, but that's not what's important. The important part, Jeff, is you move on in the chase. How would you describe this day? I'm just mentally drained right now. You know, uh, it's always tough 
racing here at Talladega trying to put yourself in position to win, but when you've got that much on the line, um, you know, and, and you know that your championship hopes are, are right there in that, that you know, final moment, uh, it, it's, it's nerve wracking. So I'm proud of this team for the job they did. We had a great strategy. Unfortunately, the caution, you know, hit us at the absolute worst time and put us behind there. But we fought hard. You know, that last uh, restart, the inside lane just didn't go anywhere. And I was just sitting there going backwards and couldn't do a thing. So. I'm just glad we made it. <laughs> I can't wait for Martinsville. I can't wait for Texas. Can't wait for Phoenix. All great tracks for us. And uh, this this team has done some amazing work this year. And uh, these next three are, are where we're going to really shine and show it. From the high of you making it, Jeff, to the fact that your three teammates did not make it, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Casey Kane, how difficult is that for you as a team? Yeah, it's very difficult. I mean, you know, we knew that, that Jimmy and, and Junior were in tough positions, but uh, if anybody could win this race, either one of those guys could. Um, you know, Casey Kane, I knew he was going to race hard all day, and, and uh, he was in and out, in and out, and I, I thought, I really thought he was going to make it, but I guess, you know, what Kenseth uh, with that, that late charge there may have been kind of uh, the, 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 the game changer there. But, yeah, it's very diff difficult. These are three guys that uh, are, are could be major factors in this championship. Uh, great teams, great drivers, and friends of mine. And I, I, I hate to see them not in there. But uh, we're going to try to make Kendrick proud and, and go out there and, and get ourselves to Homestead. The drive for five is still alive for Jeff Gordon. Another big day for Ryan Newman here at Talladega in this round of the chase, sixth, seventh, and today, fifth here at Talladega. You were in the front late. What's going through your mind knowing that you have to finish, you'd like to win, but more importantly, you have to finish with a good result. Yeah, it's just a, a, a great result, I guess, in the end uh, to make it to that next bracket for the Caterpillar Chevrolet. And everybody at RCR and ECR, just got to thank the, all, their, all their hard work and support. We just. Uh, I think to me the, the next uh, three races are the ones that are the most important to win and we've been knocking on the door here the last three so we'll just uh, we'll keep digging um, don't know how to answer any questions on that last restart I don't know if I could have done anything better or obviously could have done things worse but um, just the way things line up uh, happy to uh, stay in the top five there in the last couple laps most importantly still alive in that hunt for a championship Ryan Newman fifth at Talladega well, Casey Kane just misses the cutoff by three points the roller coaster you're in you're out Describe what you're feeling right now, Casey. Yeah, you're just trying to get the best finish you can. And uh, the, basically, the restart before, they all checked up in front of me, so I went high to get momentum. And then that didn't work because uh, I don't know why that didn't work, but it didn't work. So, anyways, then I'm in 20th and got back to 11th. So, we just were, it was tough if you weren't in the top few spots. You know, once we were up there early on, we could race up there. We had a great farmers insurance Chevy lead laps, running the top three back to the lead. But uh, once I was 10th, 8th, you know, it was just really difficult to get back to that point, and uh, I think we got back to 5th or 6th, but that was about it. All right, Casey Kane, he's out of the chase moving forward. Six races down, four to go. And we're on next to Martinsville to start the eliminator round of the chase. <laughs> you think there won't be some pushing and shoving there? Oh, certainly will be that, but I love this next round, how different these three tracks are. Who's going to be good enough to get the wins there? Martinsville, Texas, Phoenix. Join us at the track and, of course, the championship finale in South Florida. Uh, the number at the bottom of the screen or nascar.com slash tickets. How's your grid looking now? If you had Brad Keselowski making it on, then your grid's looking pretty good.
What a day it has been at Talladega Super Speedway with his season on the line. Brad Keselowski must win, and that's exactly what he did with the trip to victory lane, essentially eliminating several drivers, including three of the four Hendrick Motorsports cars. For me, that's the biggest surprise, I think, of this round. What's yours? Yeah, for me, it's going to be Kyle Busch. I mean, he had been so consistent throughout this chase format. I thought for sure he would be in the mix to win a championship. He's gone. Really, really surprising. Yeah, for me, it's got to be Brad Keselowski. I mean, the guy's down. He's out. He drove us hard out. It's probably the best I think I've ever seen Brad Keselowski drive in my life. And what about Carl Edwards? Fantastic job out of Carl. He's in the top eight. He's looking good. I mean, these are guys that had up and down years. Carl, I'm talking about. But he stayed steady. He made it in. He's looking good. And Keselowski, wow, that's all I can say. I, I think that's what's so great about this round. You can have a mistake, but, Alan, you can make up for it by just getting to victory lane. Well, Brad Kozlowski had to work awfully hard to do that uh, today here in Talladega, getting congratulations from NASCAR President Mike Helton. And so if you think about everything that we've seen in these last three races, the rumble last week at Charlotte, I'll call it, uh, the rumble we saw on the racetrack today and everything that happened at Kansas, now we look ahead to the next three. Martinsville, Texas, Phoenix, what are you expecting to see? Yeah, hard racing. Who's going to step up? Obviously, this whole chase was designed about winning. Who's going to do that from this point forward? And I think, you know, you look at next week, you got to think uh, there's some drivers that certainly can do it there. I'm going to look ahead to Texas and think that the Penske cars, that's going to be their real opportunity for one of those to go to victory lane. Yeah, when I look at the next week, Martinsville, I think of Jeff Gordon, eight wins there. I think this next round really plays into him. I and mean, like you said, it's about winning now because you've, you've narrowed it down to eight guys. You're going to have to be able to win races if you want to win this championship. So from 12 to 8 in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup after a wild race here at Talladega, headlined by Brad Keselowski winning to move from outside the chase to in and continue his hopes for a championship. And we start the Eliminator round next Sunday at Martinsville here on ESPN with our telecast presented by AutoZone starting at 1 Eastern time. What will we see in the final three? If it's anything like these last three, it's going to be a whole lot of fun to watch. Clutch performance today from Brad Kozlowski and more coverage coming up on Sports Center next. He came to Talladega needing to win to get in and Brad Kozlowski did just that here at the World's Fastest Speedway. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.